February 3rd, Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Uh, tonight we have our uh, running a bit late and a bit understaffed. We have at least one member held up by traffic and our 730 uh, session with the light board is held up with a, at least two members uh, caught on public transportation and able to get here. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> open up the evening with uh, Selectman Liaison's reports. Kev, sorry. Thank you. Uh, for those of you watching from home or in the audience, that, that voice from Anon is Kevin Sexton, <laughs> who's dialed in under our new remote policy, uh, which allows us to start a meeting with quorum and then add any member that might be remote. So this might be the first meeting where we've had multiple such members. So first one in one. Um, Kevin, while I have you, any, any public comment? Any, <laughs> Please, um, any public comment? Any liaison comments? Uh, I would just like to make uh, one comment. I sat in on a meeting that Bob ran for uh, right before the blizzard, uh, emergency management meeting. I, I did want to comment on that. I, we we definitely say, say it a lot, I think, amongst ourselves, but I think it's definitely worth noting just how good of a, a team we have uh, in this town. Uh, very well prepared. Uh, everybody was uh, came to this meeting with, without a concern whatsoever. It was arguably going to be one of the biggest storms we've seen in a long, long time. So uh, I just wanted to make a comment of how impressed I was. Um, so the public understands, you know, uh, the folks that are behind the scenes that are making sure that the roadways are safe, um, that people are taken care of, uh, and, and that the town can, can once again function in a, in a relatively quick turnaround is pretty impressive. And then going through the storm, um, and, and seeing just how fast, uh, especially the DPW, was able to clear away uh, not only that snow, but the snow that we just recently got. Um, I, I just heard earlier today that this was a historic 10-day uh, uh, period for us, but we, we've never had this amount of snow in 10 days ever before. Um, and I know there's probably a lot of people out there that are saying, oh, the, the streets are too skinny and, and, and there wasn't enough done, believe me. This could be a whole lot worse. If you've driven around some of the other towns, if you saw the traffic in Boston tonight, this could look a whole lot worse. So uh, there's really nowhere for this snow to go. And I, and I just want to commend uh, all of our department heads in general for not only this past storm, but certainly for the blizzard and their professionalism throughout that. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Just to echo that, I think while the DPW is probably very visible with the orange trucks, that also goes to the maintenance and preparation and planning that allows uh, the organization to do its job while the snow is falling. So um, it goes to the high state of operational readiness and ability to act when, when needed. So uh, point noted. John? I have um, nothing to report. Dan? Hey, um, I sat in, I uh, was asked to be the selectman uh, representative to the, uh, the group that's uh, culling resumes for the Administrative Services Director. Uh, we've received uh, over two dozen resumes so far. The group uh, consisting of myself, Bob, uh, Chief Cormier, and several current staffers from uh, uh, Administrative Services have laid out a process where we'll, we're going to rate the, the resumes, perhaps bring in 12 to 15 of the folks for more extended interviews, and then recommend a finalist. So that process will be ongoing over the next couple of weeks. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, take a moment of personal privilege to recognize the passing of, a, uh, I think, just a great all-around guy. Uh, he served this town and he served his parish for many years. His name was Dick Howard. Uh, Dick uh, died two weeks ago following a long battle with cancer. Uh, very positive, ebullient guy, if you ever knew him. Uh, he, he literally would light up a room. He was one of the charter members of CPDC along with myself uh, and Dick after I moved up to the Board of Selectmen, Dick went on and served, I think, a total of 20 years on CPDC, and he really was the rock of that board, I think, during that time. Uh, Dick made a number of contributions to his parish, just too lengthy to list here, but uh, he will be dearly missed, and um, our sympathies to the family. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, I attended the... Um, January 27th, sorry, 26th school committee meeting and uh, 
during the open public comment asked on behalf of our board for um, an opportunity for the school committee and the board of selectmen to examine intra-regionalization opportunities. We, some of you may know that we do, certainly the board do, knows that we do a fair amount of regionalization. That's mm -hmm. really a testament to thinking outside the box and looking for economy of scale, the ability to do more with what you have by working with other towns. Um, we don't do much of that at the moment with the schools, and there may be not a whole lot of opportunity, but it's worth looking at. Functions such as uh, technology or administration or any number of possible uh, functions that are completely duplicated in both organizations. Um, I think the comment was received well, and my understanding is that it's likely to be discussed at a subsequent <coughs> meeting, perhaps as early as tonight. There wasn't time to bring that up uh, that Monday night, but uh, it was recognized that that was probably some ground, ground that would either <coughs> um, show additional benefits in terms of uptime or better staffing or potentially even uh, impacting the spending. Uh, I'd also want to thank the uh, Reading School Committee for publishing, to first time to my knowledge, the um, Munis budget reports for fiscal 15 year to date and 16, which gives us the, think of it as the balance sheet and the income statement that goes along with the narrative um, for the school, school committee. And as we look for further optimizing and further understanding where our pennies and dollars and funding goes, uh, that kind of visibility will provide dividends. So I want to thank the school committee for making that information available. Okay. Um, I don't see a quorum of the light board. Our is on the way. Okay. We have how many members here? Two. Two. So we need one, one more to make an appointing committee uh, quorum. Yeah. We'd need one more member to, to, to get the quorum for the appointing committee. All right. Did you just lose Kevin? Is there Kevin? Yeah, yeah I'm right here. Okay. John, okay. John Stempick is also available by phone. Okay. Did you say they have to we'll do that? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, any public comment before we proceed? Any member of the public who has a comment to bring before the board? For those of you here for the hearing at 7.30 around uh, street acceptance, uh, there's a, a notepad in the back corner. If you wouldn't mind signing in with your name, address, email, or contact information as you have it. It's a way for the town to keep in touch with those that are in attendance and to make sure that, to understand who's here. Um, we'll get to that, we'll get to that segment uh, at 7.30. <coughs> or sooner this rate. So. John, who are you expecting from Morton Field? Me. We did, they sent us a PowerPoint. It was just an update. I also have a couple. Bob. Um, thanks, John. For, for once and perhaps the last time, I'm actually read something. I didn't want to leave anything out. Um, Kevin and some of you have hit on some of this. We've received over 50 inches of snow on the ground. Boston just endured a 10-day record snowfall and Reading received even more. It's going to take some time for Reading to fully recover from all this snow, and more is on the way Thursday night. Um, for the folks at home, please be good neighbors and clean up as much snow from your driveway, sidewalks, and nearby fire hydrants as is possible. Schools are expected to open uh, and be back in full swing on Wednesday. Please be very careful driving near the schools or near the school children. Uh, some visibility is limited due to piles of snow, and remember, kids are still kids maybe even more so with the snow. Um, please also keep an eye on your neighbors that might need assistance. If you're unsure, please call Public Safety at 781-944-1212 anytime. If you're sure that assistance is required, please, of course, dial 911 right away. Uh, DPW crews and outside contractors have done yeoman's work over the past 10 days. On Saturday night, they finally completed snow removal work from last week's blizzard. They got most of Sunday off, but at midnight they were back out preparing for the Monday night storm. It's important for the town to understand that every DPW employee works all these storms. Most do 24 to 30 hour shifts. Um, I had an interesting conversation today with a resident on a street with a small water main break that had no idea the same guys that had, didn't rush out to fix the water main break because it was small were busy plowing snow. This is all the same department, they do all, all jobs. 
Um, it's, it's all hands on deck for a snowstorm, and it's another example of a department that works really well together. To the residents and businesses in town, please be patient for the next week or so. Frankly, it's very challenging to find places to put the snow right now. Uh, today, DPW began to use snow blowers, where big plow trucks usually do a much more effective job, but there's nowhere to push the snow. Um, especially for dangerous uh, intersections and visibility problems, they had to blow the snow somewhere else. Um, as some nights are available, such as tonight and, and tomorrow night, hopefully, um, they're only able to actually do snow removal, put it in trunks, and haul it out away. Um, thanks for your understanding that everyone's doing the best they can. Fortunately, that interception at the goal line on Sunday made things a little more bearable. <laughs> um, and I do want to announce that for the 730 section, as I'm an owner of a uh, house on a private road, Although there's no vote tonight and there's no legal conflict to avoid the appearance of a conflict, I'll step out of the room for that part of the meeting. Thanks, John. Thank you. <clears throat> um, we had on our, on our schedule tonight a, a joint meeting with the Light Board. We don't have quorum, so we'll take out of order. Um, I think we'd probably go to the Morton Field improvements and try to make best use of the time we have here. <laughs> well, I'll be done. We'll be done. <laughs> Talk slow. <laughs> so, uh, Bob, do you have that to queue up? I've got yeah, it on a thumb drive. Yeah, it's on. It's just coming on. Um, so, just to bring everybody up to date, several of you um, asked me um, how things were going with the Morton Field project uh, based on a gift that we accepted from Reading Babe Ruth probably <laughs> now two or three months ago. Um, to, to, to brief you, um, since that time, since one of the dugouts in question was within the um, within the 50-foot boundary of a, of a ditch, it came under um, the conservation department. So some issues were, you know, uh, we went and visited with them, and the bottom line of that is that uh, we worked out an arrangement to actually uh, not only do the project but enhance the... Uh, um, the conservation area of the ditch as well so that all that all worked itself out fine uh, the other thing of note is that um, when the um, when Babe Ruth encounter you know embraced this project it was essentially tied to dugouts and um, they felt like they had the fundraising capacity to add a brand new backstop which is sorely in need at that time and would then um, match the match the um, the dugouts and furthermore um, there has been a need for some time for handicapped seating alongside the home bleachers mm -hmm. and that has been embraced as well. So all in the project should be somewhere in the neighborhood of about $30,000. Um, their fundraising, they are currently in possession of approximately 20000 of that money in cash and their fundraising is going rather briskly uh, despite some of the, uh, some of the visits <coughs> got slowed down in the last week but uh, it's moving right along so I just wanted to show you Bob you can just uh, um, so we added the backstop um, the dugout plan was approved as I mentioned um, we contracted with a local fence company um, and this is frankly Peter Seabolt has done a lot of work in this town on behalf of Babe Ruth and the town and the parks and the long story short um, kind of because he, because of this is going to be a winter project, we still hope it's going to be a winter project. We didn't quite expect this much snow, but um, he's going to keep some people working and let the, let the Babe Ruth and the town, um, by extension, be benefactors of a very strong pricing structure to allow these other things to go on. Um, there are also, um, recently, uh, Sully Moscarello passed away, which many of you know. Uh, he and his wife, Irene, have been constant visitors to the ballpark for 40, 40 plus years now, along with many other places. And um, there was a groundswell of friends and family that wanted to recognize them. And uh, the suggestion was made that we add the handicapped accessible seating area to be named in their, uh, in just that particular in their honor. And so that's been added to the project as well. Um, as I mentioned to you, the fundraising is really moving along briskly. Um, two-thirds of the cash is in hand and uh, we're moving on from there Bob you could just move on to the rest of this is this is what it's going to look like 
um, which I think is really a gorgeous addition to an already very beautiful uh, ballpark area. Um, this is what's going to be added um, on the first base side, which is the home team side for the uh, for our high school team. And as it coincidentally turns out, this is the spot that uh, um, Irene and Sully have um, have set their lawn chairs up for about 40 years. So it's kind of uh, so this gives you a little look of what's going on now on both first base and third base. Uh, you can see that um, there really is. You'll notice the benches are in very bad repair and um, actually are, were probably installed a little closer than they should have been. The view actually is that you take a look on the right and what's going to happen is the bench is going to be moved back about eight feet and they're going to be closed in with a roof and cage and there'll be a spot on the side there for to contain the gear and so forth. Go ahead, Bob. <coughs> and. Um, this is a side view of the same thing. Gives you some sense of what's going to be going on there. Um, I, I just think that this is everything we've talked about relative to this project has been um, <clears throat> on the master plan of the Birch Meadow project for many years. And this is really accelerating that through the good graces of a partnership with Reading Babe Ruth. I don't, I don't know if there's another one or not. I think, see? And David Talbot's here, and I'm done. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Just before we transition, I'm not sure, for those folks that are familiar with the high school baseball field, what you may not know is that many of the improvements on the field, the scoreboard, the outfield fence, the improvements here tonight, have been, have been the in infield, have been the result of private uh, fundraising efforts mm -hmm. and a lot of sweat equity by members and citizens in our town, members of various baseball clubs and <coughs> citizens in our town who love the sport and I think want to pay something back to the fun they've had on the field to generations that will come after. Um, what you have here when the completion of this work is to take an already very good facility to um, an outstanding facility and uh, Reading gets high marks for its athletic surfaces and this brings baseball I think to be one of the top surfaces, certainly in the eastern part of the state, if not all of New England. Um, so I'm a, I'm a strong fan of, of anything that, that keeps kids busy and athletics keeps their mind on something that's constructive and leadership oriented and maybe get a little bit of fun <coughs> out of it at the same time and, and this goes a long way to doing that. This uh, project will bring the amount of private funds invested into that field just to about a quarter of a million dollars over the course of the last I don't think people realize years. that, John, how um, much money's been spent there. Um, all of the work that, uh, all of the improvements were, uh, obviously, I mean, you know, the, the town needs to be cautious about how it spends its money, and yeah. it needs to spend its money where it benefits the most um, and the most citizens, and this is an important recreational facility. However, it became pretty clear about 12 years ago that uh, the this type of investment was not going to yeah, necessarily be forthcoming from the town in, in any near term venture. So, you know, group of um, of citizens and baseball fans have really worked very hard over 12 years to bring this. And as I said, um, when it's all in, this is kind of a classic example of a private public partnership that I think we need to continue to foster. Um, there'll be nearly a quarter of a million dollars raised and invested into that field on behalf of the high school and, and Babe Ruth and everybody else that uses that facility. So, Good. Um, I see Reading Light has a quorum. Do you gentlemen want to come up front? We've got a couple of empty seats. Do you want to join us up here as well? Might as well, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about how we fill these. Sorry? Yeah. The process for this filling the vacancy. John, we have another member who's available by phone. If that's if you, we've already got one phone taken. I guess if you want to attempt a second, uh, be my guest. Sure. And Marcy's here. Oh, and Marcy's here. Oh. Marcy's here. There's a spot here. Okay. Uh, for those of you who've joined in the last few minutes, if you haven't signed in in the back, if you wouldn't mind, your name, maybe an email address, phone contact information that lets us know who's here for 
the hearing at uh, 730. We're a few minutes late and uh, let's just keep in touch with you as well. So thank you. Welcome. Yeah, I hear. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Um, we're here tonight to um, appoint a new member to uh, Reading Municipal Light Board. This is a joint meeting to uh, appoint that member. Uh, an appointment committee made up of uh, members of the boards have gotten together and we're here tonight to discuss the candidate. I'll turn it over to the light board to, to talk further. So I guess we need to bring the gavel in. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You need to call yourself to order. Yep. Yeah. So hereby call the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department uh, Board of Commissioners uh, to order. We have uh, Phil Ficino, Tom O'Rourke, and myself, Dave Talbot, present. Thank you for your patience in accommodating train delays, which held us up. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. I could call John in. Um, he's in his car, also delayed. He was delayed in Salt Lake City. Uh, this uh, may be a technology feat, if be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put him on speaker and warn him that yeah. uh, he's going to go live right away. Okay. So, so our, our absent brethren can vote by the voice vote? They can. We need quorum here, but they can but vote by voice vote, vote, by roll call. As long as there's You'll quorum. You'll have to do a roll call. Hey, John, let's stay right. That's right. Um, I'm going to put you live into the select meeting, okay? I'll put you on speaker. Okay. And uh, this is my method. Okay, John Stempek is on the line for uh, okay. for his contributions. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry I can't be there. Good evening, John. Hello, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, so I believe we have one, there was one candidate who put his name in a couple of months ago, and uh, that's Dave Hennessy. And so I guess the process is to have Dave come up and, and um, okay. introduce himself. Okay. Before we do that, if yeah. I can just ask a question. We're very close to uh, a local election, and I'm just wondering what the pressing need is to have to fill it immediately rather than having an elected participant, because it kind of gives whoever steps up a little bit of an advantage, right? Then they're an incumbent, and so I'm just curious. It's a fair question. Um, you know, we, we actually entertained the same question a couple months ago and said, we're so close, sh should we just wait? And there had been a candidate who had put his name in as far back as October, um, and that, you know, the question just, was this a judgment call? Uh, if, if somebody puts his name in following uh, a vacancy, uh, past precedent is that when there's a vacancy, uh, it's filled by an appointment, and it happened, I believe, with your vacancy, uh, where it was filled by appointment. That was a full year until there was another local election, just, yeah. just so you know. Yeah. So. I think the other part is, you know, in hindsight, we the, the, the meeting was the logistics of getting a meeting scheduled. We right. had the we had everyone else town meeting early January, we, and then we had a cancellation yeah. last week. So we, right. we didn't have a lot of control over the delays. But the, the issue is also a quorum. With only four of us, we've had some difficulties getting getting enough mem getting three members mm -hmm. if two are absent. So yeah. a quorum has been an issue, okay. and there there are issues that need to be addressed. So David, why don't you come up and yeah. introduce yourself? Sit right here. Please. Yeah. Yeah, it'll work. It's like uh, church. Nobody sits in the front. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, we'll turn the spotlight on later. <laughs> I'm David Hennessy. I live on Pine Ridge Road. I've been a resident for eight years. And um, I'm in the career management consulting business. We do leadership development and management training. And I've been interested in getting involved in the town over the last several years, and I've, I've known Tom O'Rourke, and he told me about uh, the vacancy, and so I decided to put my name in, and I'm interested in supporting this uh, great municipal utility that we have and adding value to the town. Have you served in any similar capacity, either in, in Reading or any other prior town? Not in a town, but I've been uh, president of the Human Resources Association in the greater Boston area called the Human, Re Human Resources Council. As well, the, I've been on the advisory board of the largest human resources professional association. So I've had some board volunteer board work in my past. One of the things that's a little different here, I think, is as a, an elected official, or in this case an appointed official, you are the proxy for the voter. You're the proxy for the bill payer, the mm -hmm. source of funding. And whereas a board acts in an advisory capacity, there's certainly plenty of that. You're also there as the critical ear of um, where there needs to be one and, and change. And, and it's not common, it's not frequent, but it, when it's necessary, it's important to have that kind of time out, guys. We need to look at this a little different. It's not business as usual kind of kind of view. I can, I can tell you from our side, it's happened on rare occasion, but it's helpful to have that perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
I, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, there, there's the Reading Municipal Light Department has very low rates, and we have an opportunity to do some economic development around that. Um, so, have you done any work of this nature, where you're sort of trying to work with businesses and bring people together, bring boards together, to try to you know advance a good cause like economic development? I haven't. I haven't that experience. Um, part of my role, though, is to bring parties together. So I've been a liaison between companies and. Um, <coughs> putting executives together. So I have that kind of skill set, facilitation, and building teams. That would seem like a good skill set for, for the town. Graham. Uh, David, thank you for putting your candidacy forward. Uh, as you know, your uh, appointed term, if you're successful tonight, will go through the April election. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your intention regarding the April election? Are you intending to take out papers for a full seat? Uh, if so, that needs to happen in the next two weeks. But is that your intent? It's my intent. It's already. I've already taken out the paper. Oh, excellent. I'm okay. Getting the signatures now. So the news newspaper missed you by a day, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Do you have any experience with any of the regulatory components that are um, part of being the part of the Reading Municipal Light Department? I don't. So there's some training there, I guess. As as, as many of us. Have. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, I would just like to thank you for putting your name in and apologize for the delays in processing, you know, your name through, mm. through our system um, you. and yeah. getting us together. Yeah, I just comment since Dave mentioned, so I've known Dave uh, professionally and when we were, when we, we had a vacancy, Dave's also uh, done some service work uh, and it, he didn't mention it personally, but he's been associated uh, helping out occasionally at the Y and he had really looked for an opportunity to, as he mentioned, to sort of participate in uh, the community in some way so um, when this opening came up I mentioned to him and he seemed very interested so I, I think I know from uh, career experiences with he's uh, <coughs> he's very helpful uh, he's a good facilitator as he he mentioned and uh, uh, and, and a strong leader in my opinion uh, so I, I certainly endorse him very highly. David um, one reality I think of of uh, town government is uh, Reading Light is obviously independent. The uh, commissioners are voted by the the uh, electorate. Board of Selectmen are. School committee is. It's completely understandable then that there's a certain amount of. Um, we've got our swim lane. They've got their swim lane, etc. You talked moments ago about integration. I think one of the skills that would benefit our town tremendously is a formalized integration between the boards. I think we're sometimes so singularly focused on what we're charged to do and we all have lives outside here. Right. And uh, it's a volunteer appointment so naturally it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's a demand on the time but having that ability to integrate and work between the boards and realize that we're all in this together and try to find common ground and uh, sometimes it's, you, you got to remind yourself, it's, it's about what's doing best for the voter. It's not what's doing best for myself personally or for our board personally it's what's the in the best interest of the folks that put us here and I, I think your, your yeah. skills would be uh, well suited um, we haven't always had that kind of integrated focus but I'd welcome it going forward um, thank you John. amen I'm sure uh, always happy to have the joint meeting mm -hmm. between the boards you're having one now <laughs> it's, been, it's been, yeah. been a long time in coming uh, yeah, none of us are here for the salary, so uh, <laughs> on the boards anyway. Well, the first first so, first yeah, benefit. yeah. <laughs> right. So, well, thank you very much for again for very much for for your name. Do, do you uh, any, any other questions? No? If not, I'll have a motion. John, you okay? John Stempek. This is John Stepek from the highway. <laughs> and Kevin from the other side of the room. Although only Bob can talk. Kevin, about. anything on your end? Um, yeah, how you doing, Dave? Thanks for coming out tonight. It's going to sound a little ironic, but I, one of my questions I always like to ask is uh, you've been made aware of the time constraints that there's not in the world of um, serving on, on the board? I have. And you're fine with those? I am. I don't travel too much for work. It's very rare, so I'm usually around. Okay, great. No, I, I, I think, um, you know, hearing your skill set, uh, just echoing what John Arita mentioned, I, I think it would be a very nice thing to have um, somebody coming to the board that has that integration in mind. So that's great. Thank you. You ready?
for a motion? I'll make a motion if you want, or, or Dan can, Dan can make it. <laughs> okay. Right, I'll do it. I'll, sure. I'll move that okay, uh, yeah. we appoint uh, John um, D Dave, uh, David Hennessy. David Hennessy, I'm sorry. You have a, you have Tra a traffic was little, was yeah, a lot of fun coming home. You have a prepared. Phil, Phil, you have a prepared yeah. motion right there. Yeah. Move that move that the board of selectmen, the Reading Municipal Light uh, Board, appoint David R. Hennessy to one position on the Reading Municipal Light Board, with the term expiring April 7, 2015. Do I have a second? Second. Daniel, second. Let's roll call vote. John Stempeck. John. Say yeah. John, uh, John Stepek says, uh, I, my right hand is raised, my left hand is on the wheel. <laughs> Got Say it. it from here. David? Okay. Aye. David Talbot, yes. John Halsey? Uh, yes. Aye. Dan Ensminger? Yes. John Arena? Yes. Marcy West? Yes. Phil Pacino? Yes. Tommy O'Rourke? Yes. Kevin Sexton? Yes. Very good. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank, you Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this year we have a bonus snow shovel that goes with it. Want to adjourn? I'll right. move that uh, the Reading Municipal Light Board adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Roll call. Roll call, call right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, Dave just, Talbot, I just, just one thing I'd like to add that uh, I can, you know, I, I know Dick Howard too, and I second everything yep. that Dan said. Unanimous. I I'm gonna hang up now, John. Know, uh, Southern Muscarello. Uh, my dad knew him very well. Good friend of the family, and, and I second everything that's been said about Southern Muscarello too. Good. Thank you guys. So for that's coming. Uh, we all set, gentlemen. Yeah, I think we're all set. Just say you're. Yeah. We're, we're adjourned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you again for the delay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Why don't we take a few minutes to, re to recess the room? There are people outside wanting to come in, so I could get some volunteers from the board. Yep. Yeah. 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 town that are um, not part of the town uh, road system formally. They're private ways, they're driveways. Um, tonight is an attempt to reach out to all of the affected property owners on affected streets and explain to you the process by which a road becomes 
accepted by the town and managed by our DPW process. Um, there are apparently almost 80 roadways in the town that fall under this category. And uh, we'll see a presentation that lets you understand the current state of those roads and what the process is, if you choose to, to apply to have that street or road accepted by the town. George, you want to take us through the rest of this? Sure. Um, as the chairman said, we have uh, we got a lot of people here. You can see what's going on. People can stand down here if they want. If folks would like to stand and get a better view, I've got room for about half a dozen down here. Six people from over here. Probably should have had this in a different room. Continue, George. Okay. Uh, as chairman mentioned, we have uh, approximately 80 roadways uh, within the town that are private. The discussion that uh, I'm having tonight really deals with uh, approximately 60 of them. The other 20 are for larger complexes um, that are re actually constructed as a private road, and most likely they'll all, all stay a private road. It's uh, Johnson Woods. Uh, there's a lot of homes in there that are all private. Um, you have the new development um, of Reading Woods that Pilkey constructed. You have Gazebo Circle, you have Maplewood Village. Um, while those could become public, most likely those are probably going to uh, want to remain private, and uh, the process to deal with those uh, I'm not going to speak about tonight. It's really the remainder uh, 60 that uh, we're looking at. Most of them are, are regular roadways that everyone uses day in and day out. Uh, there's three exceptions to this, which are smaller 40B and uh, PRD development. Hang on, George. There's some standing room over here. Folks in the doorway trying to get in. There's room over here to stand. Just come you're, in. You're free to stand back here. We want to make sure you hear everything that's being said. So come on in. Take a few minutes to get everyone situated here. If you're in the back and you want to come in and take a look, come right in. There's a sign-up sheet. If you can get it on the way out, if you'd like. Okay, George. Why don't you continue? Okay. There are three smaller ones that we did include. Uh, two of them are PRDs, and one's a 40B complex. Uh, that's Back Bay Court. Old Mill Lane and Summer Cheney Place. Uh, those are, are smaller versions of the large ones, and they were added to the list just to get an idea if residents, you know, uh, uh, would desire to have those become public. Uh, other ones that aren't included, there's government roads. Uh, uh, there's a lot of streets. We name a lot of roadways, driveways, or anything primarily for emergency access. Uh, when 911 calls, they need an address. So uh, the, the town started a policy a couple of years ago that anything that has a pavement that has multiple buildings or even if it's a gravel road is going to get a name. This way here, when someone calls uh, emergency services, they know where to go. So I, uh, even um, Camp Curtis, we call that River Road. The roadway going to the gun club, we call Range Road. Uh, those obviously aren't included. Plus there's some that are truly paper streets. Uh, it's when the old survey was done in the early 1900s. Uh, back then, a developer just on his, uh, on his parcel drew out every possible lot combination he, uh, that he could possibly muster on that piece of property. And some portions of the roadways were never built or never intended to be built after they started developing. And th those are called paper streets. Uh, we're not dealing with those tonight. Um, this is a this is a map, and I can go to the PDF. Uh, it's probably doesn't you can probably see it there. What we're talking about really is the ones in green tonight. Uh, most of the red ones are the private driveways um, and the uh, larger complexes that we're not including. There are three of the small PR, two PIDs and forty Ds that are, are red on the map. So it's prim primarily all the green roadways. Why do they exist? Um, 
Sometimes when a developer builds a subdivision, his intent is to remain, uh, have the roadway to remain private. An uh, example of that would be Johnson Woods. Uh, sometimes it can be a regular residential street. Uh, the sub subdivision control law allows roads to be public or private, and it's really the option of the developer at the time. W while the planning board has some say in the matter, they may insist that it becomes uh, public, uh, but it's, it's actually the original developer who decides initially uh, if that's going to be public or private. Um, sometimes it's by design. Again, I revert back to R Redding Woods and Johnson Woods. Um, sometimes the roadway wasn't accepted. It's an older roadway, and the subdivision rules and regulations change, so that roadway is now substandard, and for those reasons, it, uh, the town may have never accepted the roadway, or the process was never begun. Uh, a lot of the more recent ones, uh, when, uh, when subdivision control law uh, became into effect, most <coughs> developers have to post a bond for all the work they do. Uh, and as they do the work, that bond gets released. And, and sometimes the work isn't complete. Uh, sometimes it's more costly to do the work than the bond left over, so the developer walks away. And so you have some money that's out there that the town, in most cases, has, uh, has access to. And I say most cases because you'll be surprised sometimes on real old ones, the, the banks don't even know the money exists anymore. It's, sometimes it's difficult finding it. But it's part of it is because of incomplete work, and so the process was never finished to have the uh, roadway accepted. Um, and that gets into the next one. Sometimes the roadway is completed, and something just fell through the cracks, whether the developer didn't um, uh, never apply to the town to have it accepted, or uh, there's legal issues with the development, and those were never followed through, so the roadway remains private. Uh, other times, it's the residents don't <coughs> want to uh, uh, public road. Some residents like private roadways. Uh, we do have a few of those in the town. Um, typically, the process is initiated by th three parties. Either one, the developer, once he's done, he requests it to be, de uh, to be accepted. On older streets, and we had a few recent ones since I've been here in nine years, the residents lived on a private roadway and they wanted to be wanted it to become uh, accepted as a public way, and they petitioned the town, the Board of Selectmen, to uh, have it accepted. We went through a process that I'll explain later, and uh, those streets are now accepted roadways. Um, sometimes the town initiates it. It may be a private road that the town wants to be public for a various reason. Uh, then what happens then is the town will uh, go and do all the legal paperwork and actually physically take the roadway. They'll, uh, they'll take the property by eminent domain or, in some cases, take an easement of the road over the roadway. Uh, in Redding's case, most of their roadways have been uh, actual takings, so that uh, that clears the title and uh, it's, it's physically the town's property. Uh, for the sake of this discussion, I've categorized the, uh, all the private roads into, I think, uh, six six different categories. Some of them are just slight variations of them, and I included it on a different variation because the slight variation is a different process to get it accepted. Um, the first one is, are the simple ones, where it's a subdivision and the final steps weren't completed. The developer never applied for it, or, their, uh, or the developer never really applied for it, or the town didn't um, finish all the necessary steps. The second one, category two, would be still with the newer subdivisions where there's some work that's incomplete. It may not be the roadway. It could be uh, a sidewalk that has to be repaired. It could be trees that have to be installed. It could be nothing more than the as-built plan. Uh, there's out, in most cases, there's outstanding bond for that work. Uh, in some cases, there may not be sufficient bond uh, for that work, and in that case, what would happen is the planning board would look to the Board of Selectmen to find out if the town is actually going to fund the balance or if the balance or the added costs that are needed in order to complete the subdivision uh, will be assessed the betterments of the abutters along the roadway. Um, or the board, could, the board of Selectmen could decide that, all right, we don't need, if it's in the case of trees, they could say, all right, we'll forego, forego the trees, let's just get the roadway accepted. Uh, 
Category three or old roadways, we really just don't know. I mean, it's uh, you probably, there may be some legal document that's recorded some case, in most cases there isn't, and the, there's just uh, poor records and we'll never know why it was never accepted unless there's an, there's some, uh, one of the residents that have been there from day one, they may be able to tell us, but sometimes there's nothing written down on paper of why it's not accepted. Um, then there's category four where the roads were intended to be private, other residents want them, uh, they, they requested the road to be public. That triggers uh, certain mechanisms that I'll explain later. Uh, then category five is where they were intended to be private and the uh, residents want the uh, roadway to remain private. That's added for the case where the town may actually want to do a taking of it. It's a private road. The residents want to keep it private, but the town wants it public. Uh, and the last one was added in uh, category six were for the three small special cases of the two PRDs and the 40 Bs uh, that I included in this list. In category one, in order to get a roadway accepted, this is probably the most easiest category, and this is something that um, we'll be starting probably with this Springtown meeting to to get as many in as we can. Uh, believe me, there's not that many in category one. Um, the first thing that has to happen is we need an acceptance plan. Uh, basically what an acceptance plan is a plan that shows the meets and bounds, which is all the uh, dimensions and bearings of the roadway that legally can describe that roadway. In the process of preparing that plan, we actually, a survey actually has to go uh, be done on the property to certify that the stone bounds and uh, I don't know if some of you may see them, some of them may have no idea what I'm talking about right, right now, but every change in direction or change in curve on a roadway, it's marked by a granite monument. The monument's typically four feet deep, it's six inches square at the top, the newer ones have drill holes in the middle, and that's what survey, uh, survey is used for reference point. All those have to be located, physically located, and all the math done to make sure they're in the right place. If they're not, the, if they're not, the information actually has to be shown on the plan. So that's the first thing, is to develop a plan that it will be the legal document that will get recorded <coughs> on the Registry of Deeds. When there are new, uh, all the Category 1s are newer subdivisions, which means the planning board's involved. Uh, there may be a bond. Uh, there may not. Uh, no, Category 1, there are no bonds. Uh, the planning board will actually have to take a vote that the subdivision is complete and make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen that the, um, <coughs> that the roadway is ready for acceptance and that they recommend the, uh, the uh, town accept the roadway. The next step would be for the Board of Selectmen to hold a hearing, um, and the legal term is they vote intent to lay out a roadway. Uh, and basically, they're the meets and bounds of that plan uh, that is the limits that uh, the board will be indicating that the town is going to accept as a public way, uh, and that vote in that plan goes to town meeting. Uh, town meeting has to then approve the acceptance. Then after town meeting approves the acceptance, then the, the board of selectmen hold a uh, following public uh, hearing where they actually vote the order of taking and then the town, uh, then all the legal uh, paperwork is finalized, and the plan and the documents get report recorded, and that roadway becomes public. The next one is the similar to Category One, but where there's actually outstanding bonds uh, on the uh, roadway. George, did you distribute with uh, the notice for today the names of the streets under each category? Is that known? They were, uh, with the letter that we had sent out saying the meeting was postponed had the original um, okay. d document that Good. had all Good. the letters. Thank I you. do have that list on here too. So I don't know I if can people are, it's, it'll come up later. So that, yes, every, every, we, we mailed out all of okay. them uh, following the uh, cancellation of the first meeting. So the second category is similar to the first, the only difference is that there's actually a bond outstanding for the work. Uh, in that case there, the planning board will have to vote to seize the bond, and what that does is that just allows the Department of Public Works, the town to go through, typically through the Department of Public Works, whether it's DPW crews or if it's a lot of work, uh, we may actually hire a contract to finish it, but to go through and finish the work. If there's, if the um, volume, if the cost of the work isn't covered by the bond, in most cases it is because typically we bond things for a lot higher than what they're supposed to be. 
Um, but in the rare case where the bond is this isn't insufficient to cover the work, then the planning board would have to seek the advice of the Board of Selectmen to find out if the town's going to absorb those costs, if that work's not going to be required, or if the work is required um, and if the town doesn't pay for it, then what we would do is we would assess, uh, assess all the residents that have frontage on the street as a betterment assessment. I'll explain betterment assessments later uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, in most cases, a lot of the work is minor, uh, and I think most of the bonds are uh, sufficient to cover it. A lot of the outstanding work, as I said, is subdiv is accept uh, as built and uh, the final acceptance plans. There are a few cases where there's some trees and and some grass strips that probably need repair, and by now the, the grass strips have probably already been repaired. Uh, once that once the bond is released then either the DPW will do the work or the town will hire a contract to get the work done. Then we follow the rest of the same process in step one. We draft the plan. Uh, the CPDC makes, makes a recommendation that the subdivision is complete and that it goes be, and, and makes a recommendation to the board that it gets accepted. Uh, the Board of Selectmen hold their hearing for the intent to lay out. Town meeting will vote the acceptance and then it goes back to the Board of Selectmen for the final public hearing and the order taking and then the roadway becomes um, public. George, what's the typical time for a Category 2 from start to finish? A, a lot of that depends on some of the legal issues that we have. There, there are, uh, there's a lot of legal work that I'm not, you know, that I'm simplifying in this. Uh, we go through and we actually have to pull everyone's deed. We try to do ups up, a lot of upfront uh, work for the just in rough terms, six months, one year, it's eighteen months. Some of it, some of them could be as fast as two months. Some could take six six months or more. Thank you. Uh, the rest I, I kind of grouped into all one category: category three, three through six, because they all follow a very similar process. And, and the, the the largest portion of this is if uh, betterments are going to be assessed. Um, first on the all uh, on these categories the first thing that's going to happen is the town's going to want to know if the residents on the roadway actually want it accepted now having a roadway accepted is beneficial believe me uh, private roadways uh, our legal responsibility is to plow it for emergency services only and absolutely nothing else and I will say I've worked for more than uh, I've worked for uh, a few communities and I know what other communities do and Reading treats public roadways private roadways very well uh, they plow a curb to curb just as if it's their roadway and there are many occasions where we'll go and fill some potholes uh, I know communities that don't even plow them I know communities that will make one pass in and a pass out because the truck has to go that way and that's it they won't do anything else but basically, 100% of the maintenance of that roadway, sidewalks, curbings if it has it, drain lines, the sewer lines, uh, to a small, lesser extent, water mains, mainly because we, we want to, uh, we take good care of our water mains and we, we kind of take ownership of it because we're responsible for the quality of your water right to the, uh, the tap. Um, but basically, any of the utilities under the roadway, it's a responsibility of the, home, the homeowners that own that, uh, that abut prop, that have frontage on that public way, private way, I'm sorry. Um, and years ago, developers used to always ask us, our people that um, had a large piece of property that wanted to build a, a subdivision, they used to typically go to, the first typical visit is the engineering office. Well, how much does a roadway cost? <laughs> And we used to be able to easily break it down. It's $250 a foot, $300 a foot. Well, roadways nowadays are well over $1,000 a foot um, between engineering fees, construction, and legal fees. We don't give numbers anymore. We tell them to go see an engineer and, and go see an attorney that's uh, done this before. Ro the building a roadway is extremely expensive nowadays. Um, so believe me, uh, it's my opinion, it's beneficial for anyone that lives on a private way to have the town accepted as a public way. Um, so the first thing we do is either it's a request from the residents that let us know or of lack of that, I assume what the board's going to want me to do is we'll probably sell, send questionnaires out to everyone on a, on a private roadway. Now typically in the past, uh, 
and it's entirely up to the board who really initializes the process. Um, when I first got here, the standard comment was unless everyone on the roadway wants the, uh, any resident on the roadway that um, as long as every resident wants the roadway to be public, then the town would proceed to make it a public way. Uh, I've heard that in the past one resident actually stopped a roadway from becoming public. Um, since I've been here, I knew two roadways that I was involved in, it was not unanimous. It was actually one person on each of the roadways that was against the roadway to, be, uh, to become a public way, and the board did approve it, and it did go to town meeting. And yes, the very first question that happens at town meeting when I'm up at the podium is typically, is everyone in favor of it? Uh, so those two did pass so there obviously there is some leeway but I, I I don't want to speak for the board but I assume it would it would have to be a, a overwhelming majority of the residents otherwise the you know the the town's not going to want to impose betterments on a uh, uh, of slew of people that don't want George uh, you have a question back here yes yeah, quick question. so I know you said that you're going to send out questionnaires to all the residents on the roadways in question now speaking for myself I know that I get a ton of mail I gotta believe if somebody in the neighborhood is willing to take that initiative, that only helps the process. Absolutely, that would help. If someone in the neighborhood wants to do that, to go around and uh, and and uh, get signatures from all the residents. Um, all they have to do is either you know, send it to myself or the engineering office or to the town manager and then uh, from there we'll follow that to the Board of uh, Selectmen and then they would uh, instruct us to proceed with the project. And I got to believe it works the other way too where instead of having 50 people show up with questions it can be funneled through one or two representing the neighborhood. That understanding can then be passed on much more effectively than a public meeting. Yes. Two, two quick questions. Um, Bill Andrews from Roma Lane. Um, we actually didn't know for 20 years that our road was, this is pretty funny, that it was private. <laughs> we all thought we lived on a public road. What was the tip off? Well, in 2013, they put a coating over every street but ours. Okay. So we checked and said, why uh -huh. did you skip our street? And we found out we were a private way because the builder never completed the paperwork. So back in 2013, we did what that gentleman said. We got signatures from every neighbor, so the whole neighborhood agreed, submitted the paperwork mm -hmm. back in 2013 to make it a, a public way. So the first question is earlier you had said it's sort of a two to six month process, but we sort of submitted that a year and a half ago. And the second question is after 21 years, is that, if, if there's a bond, is that still hanging out there? Because that was two decades ago. I, I would, I'll add to the first question first. Um, I believe that first came in when the previous town manager was here. And actually that, that's when the thought of having this meeting actually developed because there was a lot of, uh, uh, questions of the previous town manager and when Bob came in he's had additional ones and it's just that there's there's been a lot of other things going on in the town too and we're finally getting there but as you sit here today with Roma Lane do you have an opinion as to where Roma Lane um, category two. It's a category two yeah. in terms of the it is category two and I know it is incomplete and what is outstanding? Do you know the abandoned amount? Three stone bounds, as built, and, and as built. Okay, that's not too bad. So it's it's not a lot of work, mm -hmm. but uh, there's obviously a, a detailed survey would have to be done, and would actually have to set the stone bounds. So and how do we find out if the bond is still in place after two decades? Um, there, there's supposed to be a bond. Uh, we check our records downstairs. We check the planning board records. I will tell you that there was a subdivision recently that we had inquiries on. It was fairly old, um, and the bank couldn't find it. <laughs> Uh, but it was something minor. It was probably like five hundred dollars. So it probably, you know, it's. It, but most of the most of the bonds that I know we have are in the neighborhood of uh, five to six thousand. Those still should be in account someplace. Because right. I know the builder went bankrupt right at the time at the end, and it's probably why. It got and we have some subdivisions mm -hmm. that you know the developer didn't fi uh, finish it mainly because he became ill. Uh, there's a couple that unfortunately passed away, and that was the, really the only <coughs> reason why that um, it wasn't completed. Yeah. For those of you with questions, if you do raise your hand, I'll recognize you. Just announce where you live, your name, and ask your question. Oh, over here. How you doing? My name is David Bogey. I'm on Back Bay Cove on those PRDs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's that, how do 
how do we fit into that thing now? They, would uh, variance be changed because of the public way now? The different laws of which we had written uh, regarding that private, it's called, you call it a private, that's the first thing of a private driveway. Here is a private way, you call it a private driveway. When we had our own little things up here regarding the dog warming, the private way, how does that change? That the, the, your your property, the uh, back bay court is a uh, is a PRD and it basically is a driveway. I mean, there were there were a lot of um, uh, requirements of a standard roadway that were not incorporated into that because the intent was to be uh, if for it to become a um, private uh, area. Uh, and it's I assume you have an association. And, oh yeah, yeah like um, and and these were these were tossed into the mix just to get an input. Uh, there's ob obviously going to be a lot of legal questions that we're going to have to ask town council of what the process would be in some of these. But um, It starts with a petition. Though. It starts with a petition. If you're interested in, in converting it, you start right. with a petition. Hopefully you get mm -hmm. unanimous. Well, and then 15 we years we've been asking. So, since I've been there. George, is there a petition form that uh, folks can, what's the process? Um, typically they just write a letter saying that they're in favor of become, uh, having, a, there isn't a form established, no, we can draft one up. Typically it's nothing more than a form saying this is, uh, on, uh, the residents of such and such a street uh, wish our private way to become a public way, and then everyone signs it and they put their address next to it so we know who, who signed it, that's it. That'd be, that'd be a thing that. Are there requirements? Just stand and, just stand, a, stand and give your name, please. Uh, Bobby Anthony Chia, practical. Because it's there's no sidewalks or anything. Is there's like a criteria that it has to meet to be a town road? And that's in another slide, in a slide or two. I will get into that. Yes, the, yes, the question is yes. Basically, I'll, basically, when the board accepts a roadway, um, and I'll get into this in more detail. The engineering department uh, establishes an estimate what has to be done. That estimate is based on bringing a roadway up to current subdivi subdivision rules and regulations. So full pavement, curbing, sidewalks, everything. I'll, I'll leave it at that and explain that in a little more detail in another in a couple more slides. More to come. Sir? Kevin Aldoni for F Street. Uh, presently, there's going on a water main replacement on Libby Avenue. <coughs> okay, now what? We just got notice that we had a private way. Correct. A, I don't know if it was one of the uh, contractors there or whatever the foreman was or whatever. Said that all paved streets down in that area would be repaved when the repavement started. Um, so, now, if you're telling me it's going to be six months to a year to 15 years, they would be doing this in the spring. That the, whole area. And the it's like two and one and a half streets out of all those dead ends that are there. That contract is not going to be doing the pavement. It, uh, it'll be the town's paving contractor to do it. Uh, that's doing the pavement. We will be redoing all the roadways that are public ways over. The private roadways, we will um, trim the edges of the trench and redo the patch and make it a neat patch. Now. <coughs> mainly, mainly because the Mass General F, F Street, Street both both sides, and I think it's D Street. Yeah, I, I well, don't. One side is direct on F Street, and one side is paved. No, I understand. It's but we we <coughs> Mass General Law does not allow us to expend money to repave road to especially like pave, paving roadways on private ways. It's against Mass General laws. It's not something we make. By the time so other this whole project is going to go through, and if we apply to have our street <laughs> open the town, mm -hmm. it'll take a year and a half. Then they'll have to come down and do that while they're right down there for a 125-foot street. That's you may be correct, and there may be something the town can work out. You know, I mean, because you know, they just put new, they came down to put new fire hydrant at the end of the street. We put a hydrant. No, I mean, so town made improvements on the road. For the for the most part, all on the private road, right, right. For the most part, we put hydrants on on the uh, on the ends of the um, the roadways. Road, there was one roadway that we didn't intend to replace the main that we had to because we could not get it to as uh, mainly because it was out of service for so long. We developed a biofilm inside, and we actually couldn't pass water quality tests. 
Uh, so we had to replace the main. So that's the only main we actually replaced on a private way. The mains, the rest of the mains, the rest of the main was mainly on Libby Ave, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is public. <laughs> Keep going, George. Okay. Um, so again, we'll make a determination to find out who wants it accepted. Um, then we, we bring that information to the Board of uh, Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen will have a meeting on it and authorize us to proceed with uh, all the paperwork and necessary uh, work that has to be done in order to stop the ball rolling. The first one is we develop the what it's going to cost to improve the roadway. And as I said, we look at we look at the existing roadway. Uh, we don't go through and TV all the drain lines and TV all the sewer lines. We'll open all the manhole covers and all the catch basins, though, to get an overall condition of those. Uh, and we will develop a cost of uh, repairing the roadway and bringing it up to current subdivi subdivision board uh, standards. That's curbing, sidewalks. Uh, if a road right now our roadways are 60 foot layout a lot of these older ones are 40 feet uh, so we, we won't go full pavement with what we're doing now we'll do we'll ar arrive at a pavement with that was in effect at the time uh, 40 foot layout was a, a approved uh, subdivision road but we'll do that for the entire roadway and develop a cost estimate now the cost estimate will be high we'll tell you that right now um, and there's a reason for that it's the the cost estimate is to give all the residents on the uh, roadway an idea of the maximum cost they have to pay. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because once we go through a vetting <coughs> process, uh, the estimate that the town provides you can never go higher. All it can do is go down. And we base it on uh, contractors' prices, even if we think something can be done by DPW. Will base on a contractor's price. So, just to summarize, you're giving the public a not to exceed number. You're guaranteeing it not to exceed it, and you're going to do everything in your power to reduce to make it, it less. Absolutely. Yeah, no surprises. Question mark. Yes. Uh, John Romano, I'm on Herbert Road. I'm sorry, um, saying yes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> if um, if we have to bring the road up to the current standards, currently there are public roads that aren't to the same standards. That's right. Forest Street only has a sidewalk on one side. Okay. Would we have to take a private road, bringing it up to the town standards for a public road, and have that's sidewalks right. on both sides? That's that's something that the board of selectmen, who are the road managers, would decide. On the um, we prepare the estimate that way. It's from the hearing, the public hearing that the board will have between input from the residents and uh, the board's direction of what improvements will actually be. <coughs> um, the two that I was involved with, uh, one had granite curbing, no sidewalks. Uh, the other one, uh, we they had sidewalks on both sides of the street that were about the state of disrepair. We we repaired the sidewalks. It did not have granite curbing in uh, uh, on the roadway, and we didn't we didn't put granite curbing. And so there's different variations, and a lot of, and it, and it's really the board's decision of what they will what. Uh, they feel the town should accept. But to the question of cost, I assume the walkway is not the primary driver of cost. It's more the roadbed itself. It's it's typically the well, it's typically the roadbed and granite curbing. Uh, uh, to give you an example, uh, granite curbing is forty dollars a linear foot for each side of the roadway. So that's eighty dollars a linear foot. I can pave a roadway for less than that. As far as bringing the standard up, what about in situations where a portion of the road you couldn't bring to that standard? Could that portion of the road be kept the way it is? Um, the town is going to want a safe, drivable roadway to be an accepted public way. Okay. Because we have a 40-foot road. Mm -hmm. We use 20 feet of it. The other 20 feet where I am is 12 feet off the ground because it's on a hill. Looks flat on the paper, but in, in essence, it's on the hill. Mm -hmm. so I don't know how that would even come into play in a situation each like that. each case is so different you can, it is not there's not one shoe that fits all uh, you know it, uh, each one's going to have to be looked at individually I mean obviously we're going to want it uh, safe for resident safe for the motorist to be a uh, general public to be utilizing that roadway we're going to want it uh, make the roadway usable by emergency services and uh, and everything else so I mean each case is different it's to hyper you know just to but it could be done it's we would make some improvements on it. I mean, we wouldn't leave something gravel. 
there's going to be some sort of improvements to make the road safe and uh, passable. <coughs> and if that, what you said, um, it doesn't have to be 100% approval by the abutters, but if you had one abutter that might have a hardship over it. This, um, I think that well, falls under the discretion of the board of selectmen. Yes. You can imagine in a larger division, it's really hard to get 100%. And rather than answer hypothetical, I think the board had looked favorably if it was a single individual and it was a hardship, which try to um, factor that into the thinking. It's hard to know in advance until you go through it. Some of us have been waiting 15 years, so let's we'll wait and see what the uh, what the petitions say. So, we're. Uh, Sorry, another question? Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, uh, Jeanette Lurigo, Tennessee Place. Um, could you expand on what pros are, if any, are to remain private? And if the residents chose to remain private, um, would there be, how would we maintain it? Would there be special permits? Do we have to use specific contractors? How would that work? Um, uh, there's no defined list of which roads are to remain private right now. I knew I, I do know of two roads, not, uh, nothing that I have personal experience with, but just hearing over the past um, issues that happened in the town from years ago, I know there's two streets where in, pre, in previous, the residents desired them to remain <coughs> private. One's Country Drive and the other one's a small portion of Sanborn Lane. Um, those are the only ones I know where residents have expressed a, a feeling to have them remain private. Beyond that, I have, you know, it's there's something we have to find out from the residents. And then, um, a side bar on that, you said earlier it's homeowners with frontage on the road. So would it not be the homeowners of record to the street? Because on Timothy Place, there's two homeowners of record, but there's four homes that open onto Timothy Place. There's uh, any of the any of the properties that abut that roadway. If their property touches the roadway layout, they would be assessed. It could be you know, there, uh, for example, Causeway Road uh, is one of the one of the last streets we accepted. Reading Municipal Light owned property down there. They had this substation in the town owned property down there. We assessed ourselves and we assessed Reading Municipal Light. So they paid their equal share of that the betterment cost. So and that's how and, and basically from the estimate that I provide. Um, if a roadway's 400 feet long, let's just say the roadway's a rectangle and doesn't have a cul-de-sac, if you can make it easier. It's 400 feet okay. long, so there's 400 feet of frontage on one side, 400 feet of frontage on, on, on the other side. So, the, you know, and we take that estimate, divide it by 800 feet, this is 400 feet on each side, and that's what the linear cost of frontage right. comes out to. Yeah. Uh, and that's what the assessment would be for each one of those uh, property owners. Those notices have to go out to all the residents. It has to go out for a certain required number of days before the Board of Selectmen hold the hearing. And then the Board of Selectmen will have a public hearing to discuss the uh, road improvements, to discuss the roadway being accepted, and to discuss the betterments. <coughs> At that meeting, that's when the decision that the, uh, that the Board decides which improvements are gonna be made and which ones are not gonna be made. Uh, if there are some improvements that are not gonna be made, then my office would redo the estimate and um, resend the notices back out to the residents. Uh, at that time there, the board will also, sometimes that, that takes more than one meeting, sometimes that may take two meetings, because uh, I think actually it has to be a hearing uh, for the board to accept the final assessment. So if something changes, uh, the board probably has to have another meeting and that they would uh, then take a vote to intend to lay out and that would go to town meeting, and I know we have another question. Back in the corner, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Paul Albiotti, uh, Lakeview Ave. Uh, uh, Lakeview Ave is, is a private way. I'm not sure what category it falls into, but at the end of, uh, at the end of Lakeview Ave is Zani's uh, construction company. Yep. And Zani, there's a fair amount of land back there that is on the market that's going to be sold and developed, I'm sure. And I'd like to, you know, I don't know if the Lakeview Ave residents at this current time are going to all agree to uh, the assessments for a, for a public way. But I'd like to say <coughs> that the condition of Lakeview Ave is very poor. Mm -hmm. And yep. part of the reason that Lakeview Ave is so poor is mm -hmm. the town is driving their trucks 
um, they're doing work on Goober Street, and they're driving day, all day long, every day of the week. There are 18-wheelers full of heavy material that are driving up and down Lake Duet to go into the Zani land. And they are uh, significantly adding to the deterioration of the growth. So we're, you know, we, we're, we're, we're responsible for making repairs there. I think the town should share some responsibility in maintaining that road, even if it stays a private way because of all the driving that's been going on in the Ruben Street repair. Agree. Yep. Is that is that town are those town vehicles from? No. Yep. It's my understanding that the contractor that's working for MWRA is uh, has rented a portion of Zani's property and is storing some equipment and storing gravel there. So that's coming from the MWRA water main project. Yep. Well there's a there's a lot of heavy equipment riding up and down yep. the street. I'm it's all a day. Private <laughs> way and it's being used by heavy equipment for for whatever reason. I thought it was moving street work. That's where it looks like it's coming from. West West Street. West Street. Okay, it's the MWRA water main, but you know it, that's you as well as Zani has a right to. I'll, I'll use the word conduct business from your roadway, and 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 basically it's you know it's Zani that's allowing this to happen. Uh, you know it's. It's something that would have to be discussed at the board level once once if, uh, the issue comes to. I hear what you're saying, sir. That's we're trying to. I, I I hear it's an acute issue. The primary purpose of tonight is to deal with the process to get into public. Well, I I understand. So. This at some point will be involved in the discussion. Sure. Yeah. Sure. The board does retain certain discretion in that matter. I think. Sir. Yes, I'm on Lake Beard as well. Your Just name? to reiterate that a little bit. Your name, please? Uh, John Green. Now, Zani's at the end, but on one side, it's just all residents, and it's probably around like, I don't know, I want to say like seven or eight houses. And on the other <coughs> side is the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. So that's where you're running into kind of like that problem because to go around and try to get a petition, I would actually go and get the petition signed, but to ask all the residents that live there. You, know, you need and to go to the landlord yeah, in that case. It has right. to be the owner of the apartment. Yeah. Not the okay. not so it's, it's one signature, not 50. Right. right. Unless they condo as well, how it's worth it. No, <laughs> not That's in that true. case. That's true. <laughs> Keep going. So, so basically, after Sorry, the question back here? Uh, yes, sir. My name is Anthony Turley. I live on Bunker Avenue. <coughs> in the case of betterments that may be deemed necessary for a private road, um, you mentioned sidewalks. Um, in, in the case of our street, sidewalks on either, either or both sides would be rather de um, um, de destructive to the existing property. And it might be nice for the residents to know that in advance prior to initiating the process. So how, how does that work if, you know, we initiate the process of becoming public and we find out after the fact that we're going to lose six feet on either side of the, of the road, you know, we'd like to change our mind. Where's the point of no return, George? Exactly. Anytime. 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 Okay. The point of no return is anytime, and um, there. This gets into the same case with even even public ways. Um, you say lose part of your property, you're actually using part of the roadway layout because the the sidewalk's only going to go within the layout. Uh, same thing where some town roads, public ways don't have sidewalks. That that last 12, 15 feet is actually town property. Last question over here, we'll move on. Process question, Bill Andrews, we're on the lane. Um, if we've already got the signatures from 2013, some new people have moved in now, so some houses have changed over. <coughs> Does the original application of uh, our request stand or <coughs> we have to go around and re-get the signatures? I, I would say, you know, it's up to the board, but I would say submit the original ones and we could we could poll those new owners individually. Well, there's so going to be a public hearing, so everybody's going to have to be advised. Yeah. Right. Everybody concerned will have to be advised that there's a public hearing, so um, people who might dissent or might want to get on board would have that opportunity. I think that speaks to the question of point of no return as well. I mean, you know, there's a public hearing process that uh, it allows all to be heard and then that's when you get down to the final decision-making process following those. And sometimes during those hearings I've had it where this side says no, that side says yes, and there's a dialogue, and all of a sudden they're in agreement. It's really funny how communication breaks out when you have some of these. 
the back corner. Uh, uh, Dominic Bocchino, I'm on Sumner Chain Place. Uh, I'm hearing you right. Basically, what you're saying here is the one thing so far, everybody should really take a poll within their own development and see if they want this done. And the next step, I believe you're saying, is to talk to a surveyor and an engineer to find out what those potential costs might be. No, I. Because I'd you're saying that the, that the, that the residents are going to bear the cost right. in some cases, and that's going to vary depending on certain areas. The only thing that you would have to do is take the poll. After that, it's in the, uh, it's in the town's court. We would actually develop the estimate, and we would divulge that to all the residents, and then it would be discussion at the board level. Karen? Karen Harris, Vince Road. Um, so I live on a road that has been in existence since at least 1938. Part of it is private. I purchased a home in the public part in 1996. So right after it was improved to facilitate a new subdivision. So what I'm wondering is, as you go through the process for this road, do we have to get into this private versus public part? It's very clear to me that, and, and I was pretty surprised a year ago to get the answer that I live on a private road. I don't own a single piece of paper that says I live on a private road. So <coughs> I'm like, this is all paperwork. But, but again, normally we, we, as all residents of the road, we would have the same, have input into a single issue, but it's not. It's really two different issues. So I was just wondering how that would work. Actually, dividends road is one of the easy ones. They were in a category one. The there only thing go. that's, the Except only reason why Except dividends tomorrow. road wasn't accepted is the final acceptance plan was never drafted, and one of the reasons is that the um, the uh, it has to mat mathematically close, and uh, the individual who was doing it at the time couldn't get it to mathematically uh, close, and there, there has to be some additional survey work and research at the registry to get this to close. So it's just really drafting the acceptance plan in the defense road. There's nothing else that has to be done. There's really nothing the residents have to uh, have to do. Uh, I actually have, I actually believe that Dividends Road, even though it would probably have to go back again prior to me uh, working here, actually was before town meeting and a vote was a uh, vote to accept it. It's just that the plan was never developed and the final steps weren't carried forth by the board because of the lack of the plan. Uh, that's something we'd have to ask town council to find out if that actually has to go before town meeting. Again. So how would we stay in touch on that if there's no process for residents? Um, I will, my office would, my office or the town manager's office would let you know. Question back here, sir? Did you hand up earlier? Yeah, I mean, I know that you had indicated that. No, I'm sorry, your name? Sorry, uh, 3400 has come out. So I know you said that it depends on what needs to be done, sidewalk, granite, repaving, and so on and so forth, but, and that the residents would likely, unless it's a category one, to have to share the cost for the improvement to bring it up to the code. Mm -hmm. And I know and so I know it depends, but what's the range? Like what are we talking about? Between fifty and hundred thousand, five to ten. What have you seen betterments you know, for in the past? It Which depends, you know, the um, the yeah, causeway the road betterments um, is that's one where we probably spent the most money. Those to look for a hands of meeting. I believe those betterments ranged between, I want to say $3,000 and $12,000, something like that. Um, per, per property. <coughs> per property. The, uh, the other roadway was Woodland Ave. Uh, the original estimate was $90,000. The majority of the work was done by town DPW crews, and I think the final cost came in at maybe thirty thousand dollars for the entire roadway so i mean there, it was the final as the final betterments was, was actually one third of what was originally quoted now that one was that one was a probably a uh, exception to the rule because there was a lot of work that could be done by the town uh the easiest way to figure out what probably if i say it, it's really up to the board but look at the streets around you if the streets around you have granite curbing most likely the town's going to request require granite curbing if the streets around you have sidewalks on both sides you're probably going to be required to put sidewalks on both sides if there's only a sidewalk on one side and no granite curbing most likely the board's board knows that yeah you know, I, I can't answer for the board uh but you know the board's going to realize that granite curbing is expensive uh, and if none of the other streets in the neighborhoods in the surrounding streets have it 
you probably won't get required to have it. I'll be pushing for it. I'll tell you that right now. My boss will be because it really saves the integrity of the roadway. But we understand uh, that you know we it's, <coughs> that it's something that we uh, may lose. But you know, my argument to the board would that would be that we need it. I'll tell you that right up front. But the board, you know, we lose our argument a lot. <laughs> Gentleman right here. George, quick question on Timothy Nick Duraney, Timothy Your name, Place. sir? Nick Duraney and Timothy Place. We were told the road was accepted years ago. And uh, Peter Zani was the building. And I'm wondering, since he's still developing, do you let, if he did not submit the plans, do you still let him develop um, new subdivisions if he has outstanding um, projects that are not finished? Because <coughs> um, I don't see what's left. I mean, the road looks. We thought it was, we were told it's not a private road. I don't mean to interrupt. That's really kind of out of scope for the meeting. That's okay. something that probably yeah. you and George might take offline just in the spirit of time. Mm -hmm. So, Dave, to call you a back bay putting in that PRD, um, we were discussing like, um, kind of like with him, is, uh, where he is with the road. There's no possible way you can put sidewalks yeah. on our road. I think I all George is saying is we're, it's going to be engaged well, in terms of the context of the neighborhood. Well, I want to know, well, they have a guy come out, like you said, survey look at things and say, well, we can make this a public road, but we don't even have to put sidewalks on the granite curb. We would go out and look at the roadway, determine what was there, and we would we would look at the current subdivision standards and base an estimate on that. Now, when there's if there's something that's impossible to do, we'd identify that to the Board of Selectmen and we wouldn't include those costs. We'd probably have the cost on the side saying if, if these could be done, this is what it would be cost, but we don't feel it's physically possible to do that. But it's, it's, it's something that, you know, we would develop the estimate and that gets discussed at the board meeting. So the cost is basically coming out of our pockets, you're saying. You, you want us to, it's like raising the taxes. Then you raise the taxes too. On top of that, right? Well, you know, the PRDs is, are a special. The PRDs and the, and the 40 Bs are a special case because there are a lot of concessions that the town gave right. in order to build those developments. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said those. I don't want to get into that part of it. But I'm just trying to say, <coughs> well, you want yeah. us, you you want to, us to, to, to do the road, pay for it, then bang us for the taxes again, right? No, I don't see. And that's rules. what you're going to do. I mean, obviously, you're going to say, well, no. we gave you. No. Public way now. We're going to take care of you this. We're it's going to the take town's care of that. Property. Of course, we're going to raise those taxes up this way now. It, it, Maintain it, right? A couple of a couple of things. No, you say no now, but when that tax bill comes and it's over two, three, four hundred dollars more because we did your rollover. Oh, well, actually, we did the rollover. John, I think it's important to understand that you know we have a tax assessment that was slightly lower than it was the year before. The difference is, and this is something a lot of people don't realize. As the value of your property goes up, which is not a function of the town making that decision, it's a function of the economics of being in Reading and the value of your property. So your rate stays constant, but the value of your home goes up, which would, of course, in your example, cause your property taxes to go up because it's, a, it's based on the value of your property. You know, when it comes to roads, those roads become if they become public ways, they become the property of the town. There, there's not, there's nothing going on tax-wise there. And from the standpoint of, you know, out upfront expense to survey and understand before you make a decision, right. that's, well, that's how it, from what I understand. Being... Unless you correct me if I'm wrong, George. You know, I mean, when once the petition happens, then, you know, engineering is going to look at this and say, okay. This is what a betterment. This is this is the scope of the betterments. This is what it's going to cost. Do you want to go forward in the public hearing? Well, what, I'm, what we've been trying for the last 15, 18 years or so is just to have the plows come down and plow it. That's right. That's it. Make it a public, you know, public road. I don't need curbs and silos. They're not going to. They're not going to be feasible. I understand. All I want is the track to come down and plow it, so this gentleman doesn't have to get get up and do it three to four times. Well, our taxes are paying for that already. I understand. That's what I'm saying. The reason for this meeting is to provide guidance for the general process, and many of the questions tonight have been narrowing in on specifics. In the interest of time and maybe describing more about the process, I'd like to focus on just the mechanism by which you get the petition done, get your interest notice to the town. We get back to you in terms of valuation or additional scope of work that needs to be performed. Try to keep it more in terms of the overall process. Naturally, on your specifics, you'll be in contact with town engineer and uh, 
the, in the town process. Right. Sorry. Yeah, a general question, Bill Nine and Small Lane. Uh, are there special cases where town has easements through property on the roads? We, a idea. lot of a lot of the subdivisions. Um, some of the old ones probably lacking it, but some of the most of the new ones. We uh, the first thing we do is we take an easement over the entire roadway for maintenance of the utilities, um, primarily for emergency purposes, so that it, uh, if something's happening, if the developer doesn't get to it in time, that we can get to it. We do the same thing for Johnson Woods. We have an easement off every one of those roadways. Uh, the, the the owner of the development is actually responsible for maintenance utilities. But if there's a sewer blockage or something wrong with the water main, that that we if they can get there in time, we have a right to gain access. The easement is typically only for that. It's it's doesn't give us the it does an easement is not a public right away. There are there are some there are a lot of times people confuse that they think we have an easement over their property. Uh, well, in a lot of cases we do. We have water easement, sewer easements, drain easements. That gives us a right to install the pipe and maintain the pipe. We don't would own them. Would you be part of resurfacing? Yep. Um, if we had to do repair, we would we would repair we would repair the trench. Yes. Um, no more questions. Getting back to yep. slide. I'm actually almost done. Um, so after the board has their public hearing and uh, votes their intent, it goes to town meeting, and the town meeting votes to be accepted. Um, and then the town goes on construction improvements. Sometimes that could be with DPW crews. Uh, if there's a lot of work, uh, and depending on the time of year and whatnot and what else well, the, the department may be doing, we may hire contractors to do it. Um, all the costs are, are uh, details are, are kept very well on that. Uh, and then so whatever it costs us to fix the roadway, uh, improvements that we have to make that were basically what was approved at the meeting, uh, those will be tallied up and then we look at everyone's frontage, figure out uh, what, uh, what everyone's better, betterment would be and we would produce a final uh, uh, cost of the betterments, mail that to everyone, um, and that would be the betterment, the uh, betterment assessment that you would be responsible to pay for. Uh, again, that would be another board of select and public hearing um, <coughs> that the board would vote on the assessment and then actually vote the taking to, uh, to own the roadway. Then all the legal paperwork would, uh, would occur for us to Record all, do all the recording. The betterments would be recorded. The roadway would be recorded. We'd notify ass uh, assessors upstairs uh, that um, the betterments are to be assessed, mm -hmm. and the betterments are assessed on linear footage uh, frontage of roadway. There is a little bit of a tricky formula when uh, a house lives on a corner and they actually front on both way on, on two streets. Uh, I, I forget what it is right now, but um, there, there's a little bit of formula. That's actually something that was voted by the board, uh, board, of, uh, board of Public Works and Board of Survey years ago when it was something that the current, that the Board of Selectmen adopted. Um, Question in the back, George. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Mark Boyer on Emerson Street. Uh, I'm on a private break, and I want to know, before I get a petition to make it public, I'd like to know, can I get an estimate We're not going to, you know, unless I get instructed by the board, uh, we're not going to do that. I mean, it, we have, you know, 60 streets that involve, uh, you know, to try to expedite this as much as possible, we're probably going to go out and actually hire land surveyors rather than do the surveying ourselves, especially if uh, to develop Did these. Uh, uh, huh? I, I will, uh, unless the board directs me, it's not something that uh, I'm going to do, no. But George, I, did, I thought I just understood you to say that if the petition comes in, that's what will kick off the valuation process. He was, ask, he was asking for an just estimate to get before the he does the petition. Yeah, he wants an I understand, but in the end of the day, he's not committing in either order. No, but it's committing a lot of our time that we don't have time of right now. There's a lot of other, I mean, that's why, that's why I say some of these are going to be. The petition does not obligate you. To go forward, and that's the key. I know it's because if the water drain or the sewer main breaks down, I have a headquarters. The Lord has to be with there, I take what? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. 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 Well, that's what I
Um, you might publish ranges of typical values ranges. that are not committing. I, yeah, I was going to say, we'd, we'd put on our, we'll, non binding. We'll develop yeah. some estimates. Um, based on typical ranges and throw it on the web and throw it on our web page so that will give someone some, give you an idea it's, it's, it's really just going to be a rule of thumb but it, it's going to give you a ballpark question hang on hang on sir one at a time please in the back I'm going to cancel we don't know what the price is yeah Mike Bruno Mark Slane I just want to piggyback on that and that's a question that's done in that thing that's so long only because it contradicts what I got from engineering a couple of years ago along that point of no return Let's say I'm not a dead end, we want to keep it that way, but it could be connected to another degree. Um, if you get our estimate back and it's higher than we'd like, or it says we're going to put your street through and we don't want to do that, we can stop at that point. Because before we. Sure. At the public hearing, you'd show up and say, We changed our mind. We don't want to do it. We're done. Right. Now, we, we, the town wouldn't want to waste the energy to do the survey to get the valuation. That's part of the. The discussion that's, that's got to happen up front. If there's any ambiguity, you'd like to get through that. Well, everything's up to the Board of Selectmen. Typically, whether it's a yes or no is going to happen during the public hearing to discuss the betterments. It could happen after that. Uh, it could go all the way to town meeting, and town meeting could vote to accept it. Before we start, and then all of us, let's say there's two months between town meeting and when we actually started doing the work. And all of a sudden, there was a petition before the Board of Selectmen. No, we don't want the roadway to become public. We want to stop the process. Yeah. As long as the Board agreed to that, then we wouldn't do the construction. So really, this is the drop dead date of no return. Once we start construction, everyone's locked in. But well, we would know what the plan was before that. Yes. That Sir? Yes. Um, I'm trying to speak what he just said. Is that the same thing? We can't, I can't say you say when to go ahead and do it, if you're going to give us uh, no, it's not giving us the price. We get a, the price before we say yes. I understand. There's an established process. There's a million. There's a number of roads in the town that are in varying conditions. There's a standard process that George has described to account for roads that have one sidewalk, no sidewalks, two sidewalks, 40 foot, 60 foot gravel, asphalt, and we can give rules of thumb to give you a sense of where you'll be. Mm -hmm. The only thing that'll give you the firm absolute not to exceed numbers to go through the process. So you'll get a sense of it. I get a good sense of it. I mean, it's a lot of money. Okay. George, you, you keep um, you, well, neglect, you keep no. It's just you keep neglecting the fact that by signing a petition, you only start the process. You don't commit. Your, you don't. Com, you don't commit yourself to anything. All you're going to commit yourself to is getting a price. I'm going to make, make everyone so everyone so I'm glad. And all of a sudden, boom! All of a sudden, you come up with a price, and I say, "Well, what the hell is this?" Look, you can't know till you know. So I don't know how to answer the question that. without. You know, that's what I'm saying. Have the surveyors come out and say, "Go on, each sixty goals. Yeah. Sixty goals." Thank you. I want to answer a few other questions if you don't mind. Woman in the back, please. Just, just, to, just stand and announce who you are, ma'am, please. I actually don't remember saying that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The, 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 no, what it is, it's probably what I'm, I have the slide up right now on the betterments. The betterments are, are allowed to be paid up front, or you could spread it out over 20 years. Uh, and it, but if it's spread out over 20 years, it's with interest, and it's the Board of Selectmen that sets the interest rate. However, there is a maximum that's allowed by law. Hmm? When the property sold, uh, it's it's up to the bank. But a lot of times, uh, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think actually the I think it's worked out between the bank. Sometimes it's um, it it's taken off the purchase price, and that the new owner doesn't pay for it, or the new owner just ends up paying for the, uh, the for the betterments for the balance of the year. I, it's really up to the bank's attorneys. It's up to the bank's attorneys. Well, you know, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to spread it over 20. You can spread it over five, you can do a three, it's any range, you can't go more than 20. How are we on slides, George? That's my last slide. Um, yeah, question in the back? Just to add on exactly. Sorry, your name, sir? Oh, I'm sorry, Scott Berger, um, Nelson. Um, mm -hmm. I think I read the same thing she did, where I think the line was basically, you know, we have 60 streets. If 20 of you want to go, like the purpose of this was to see if we can get 
there might be economies of scale to doing 20 streets at once yep. and piling the resources on that instead of every five years having another street there. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I mean, that, that wasn't a firm commitment. It was just a... I would. I don't remember putting better. anything in there, but I guess the only uh, the only way that would happen is that you know, if we had to contract out some of this work, obviously contracting out a large number of, of, of work to do versus a small project, so we, we get a better price on a larger project for each individual item. But I'm just glancing at it, and I don't see where it is. It's Sorry, area, but I guess I prefer it's possible that you may have construed something that way. Yeah, thank That's you. Fine. But. Sure. Ma'am? Yeah. Um, when looking at the betterment, does is it the town have to do them or can the residents opt to get somebody else to do the betterment? And if the betterments are kind of minimal, is there a way of petitioning for an exemption of having to conduct that betterment? For example, you mentioned uh, the granite, we have granite curving, but we only have one side that has a sidewalk, but we really need the two when we petition to just leave it as one sidewalk. I'll answer the second one first. That's entirely up to the Board of Selectmen of what they what they choose to be included, uh, what they deem necessary for the improvements to that roadway to come up public way. Uh, as far as your first question, uh, the town hires the contractor. So we couldn't, since it's a private way, we couldn't no. hire our own to, because if we didn't like the pricing of what the you, you, is. You could do that. You could say, uh, uh, you, could, you could come through and say, all right, we have a contractor that will do this. We got a price off of them. Uh, it's a very rare case to do that the board would actually have to approve this. And we're going to construct all these improvements. Then we're going to then we're going to come back and repetition be accepted. We would if that happened. I would have a lot of stipulations for the board. We'd mm -hmm. have to be there inspecting it, and would have to and it have to be done to our standards because uh, a lot of times um, when. And I don't mean this with any di disrespect to residents, but when residents ask a contractor to get something done, they don't have a specification book that's with them. And so a contractor is going to bid it one way. But we hand them the specification book, and it's not the same price because we're asking them to do it a specific way. You know, they may only say, yeah, I only need three inches of pavement, but we're saying, no, you need four. Uh, we ne you need this certain grade and where you he may do something different. So, we, we be able to get that data from you to, to present to somebody else? If it, if it came to the case um, that, uh, that that was allowed, yes, it would be. And, and the reason why I say that very reluctantly, because we actually had a, a similar case like that just fairly recently on curbing in a sidewalk. And that's exactly what happened. The contractor gave uh, these, this individual uh, prices and they weren't even we our granite curbing is uh, six inch wide at the top 18 inches deep he quoted them on four inches wide uh, the pavement thickness wasn't even as thick as what we normally do uh, he was only quoting them three inches of loom we were saying six inches of loom so naturally our price was around 40 45 dollars a foot where the contract was only 20. Thank you. question in the back sir yeah uh damian delano zachary lane Um, the homeowners can is something we actually have to and as far as taking 20 years is when there's when there's an act <coughs> it's actually the responsibility of the developer to finish the subdivision not the town and it's the developer that dropped the ball the you know for various reasons and unfortunately Zachary may be that the, that the individual became ill um, but you know there's someone in that company that that co that development company that still was in control uh, and they didn't finish it. We actually have somewhere. The developer got a permit to do the development in the town. He he got subdivision approval through the planning board, which right. basically establishes the layout and how he's going to construct the roadway, and he's he's re and he's required to build it to those standards, um, and he's required to build. Typically, he builds it within so many years. Uh, he has to build it within so many years. Uh, and a lot of times they come back before, to the planning board, say, I need a year extension, year extension. <coughs> now, 
you're entirely right. In that case, it could be that you know, there's a change in the, uh, the planning board or something, and someone didn't know that a development uh, completion date has expired. It should have got picked up, but it didn't. But it ultimately, it's the developer's responsibility to finish the subdivision, not the town's. Well, what about my second question? How, how does, how, do we know on Zachary Lane and Category 2? That I, on I would, that's something my department would have to figure out. You know, the, based on what I see for Zachary, um, Site clean up, tree replacement, as built, street acceptance plan, stone bounds. Um, if there, and I don't, it's, that was part of a group, so it may be tied to one of the other bonds. The bond's probably sufficient. If it's not, you know, it's, the town would probably end up doing a survey to set the bounds. Um, with the 15 minutes we have left, any, please try to keep your questions narrowed to the process, not to the specifics. Sir. Uh, David Trinello, Old Mill Lane. Uh, we're one of those PRDs that's a driveway. In years at the time, since that was a statutory animal that created that street, should we maybe plan to have an offline conversation with you or members of your department as to whether or not absolutely. it can be done because it was a statutory? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I wasn't in favor of actually putting in the PRDs in 40B, but uh, I was asked to throw it in to see what response we had, but because I know they're going to be problematic. Okay. And that's something, you know, I, I think truly <coughs> We'll gladly sit down and we can talk about it. There's probably a lot of questions you may have. I may have to ask town council. Sorry, the woman in the back, please. It's, um, yeah. In my situation, I, it's like three homes and then my side of it, the other side of the street, so. <laughs> it's, it's based on frontage. It's a, whatever, if you have, if you have, uh, let's just, let's just say that the, <coughs> let's say that the, uh, well, the corner one's a different one, and I think the way, I think the way the corner one reads, I don't even want to think, I, I don't want to guess. I know there's a little formula for the corner one, but for straight frontage, uh, if it if it comes out to that the cost is ten dollars per foot, and you have a hundred feet of frontage, your bill's a thousand dollars. In in some rare cases, it may involve lighting, but I would think uh, even on some of the private ways right now, if there was insufficient lighting, that the town probably would have had uh, Reading Municipal Light install a light. But I, I I wouldn't say that some of these may you know there's possible that the few may involve a, light, a street light. Ma'am. Hi, Sue Road. Um, Kelch is off Um, Probably. And I think it speaks to your whole petition process because if that's not an assumption, I, the whole road needs to be included. I, I would I would assume it would be. Okay. Um, obviously, that that final decision rests with the board. Okay. Well, then that would change the whole petition for yeah. the entire street. I mean, that's all we've been. I mean, in that case, there I assume it would be, but that's you know I I shouldn't assume something well, like that. Well, that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. So. What uh, in my in my history of doing this in over 30 years, it typically remains it remains an emergency access road, but I have seen cases where it did change. But it's entirely up to the, the Board of Selectmen. Any other process questions with folks here tonight, sir? How do we all keep track of this so we are not getting 60 people, 100, 200 people calling you? Is there a website where we can look and we can see where we are in the process? I mean, so everybody's going to want to keep asking where am I we, in the process, so how do we know where we are? We, uh, We'll populate something on the engineering department's website, which is within DPW. Uh, I can tell you right now that you know th we're we're going to start the process for category ones and category ones first, and then get into category twos. Uh, category one, there's only four streets, uh, and we should be able to get those.
approved at this spring town meeting i would think that the sign-in sheet from tonight would be helpful yeah. um, without respect to which where you live it's a way to kind of broadcast where the current update is i'll i'll mention it to bob our town manager is not here right now because he's, because he's among the affected properties uh so he's recused himself but i'll mention it to bob when he's back that that mailing list if you haven't signed up in the back corner please make a point to do so yeah, um, in, in categories two, we don't really need anyone's input because we know there are subdivisions that were mm -hmm. intended to be private. It's all the rest of the categories that we're probably going to need the residents' input. So you know, we'll, we'll we'll have to develop a good way to to get to disseminate information to everyone, whether yeah. it's through a poll online or, or something or okay. email and, or whatever. Any other process questions, sir? In the back. Uh, Skinner, uh, uh, a lot of these private roads are dead end. There's, I guess the best way to answer that, even though they're going to be site specific, if there's room to do something like that, we'll probably put something in for emergency turnaround. If there's physically no possible way it could go in, it would just stay the way it is. But I mean, obviously, you know, we'd, we're going to want to accommodate the fire chief at some, you know, to some point. Um, but in most cases, it probably wouldn't unless there's a lot of vacant property down there that we could actually uh, formulate some kind of turnaround. Any other process questions? Sir, in the front. Uh, there's a process question, but the uh, private way, uh, Lawrence Powell, uh, Spruce Road, if the, the, the private way itself, can the town help us figure out who owns the, uh, the, the land itself? Does the town own it, or does the abutters own it in the middle, or how is that? Uh, I can, it's, each case is different. And it depends on how the developer, uh, how the developer's attorney drafted the deeds. If you look at your deed, um, it's going to say one of three things. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to say that the first one, which is the easy one, it says the developer re retains the rights and interest in the roadway. That means he owns it. Um, it may just say that a roadway for intended purposes of public ways, which is. Um, not very well worded, but that probably, that goes along, and if it's silent, those last two, ba basically through land court dis decisions and what they call prescriptive rights, you actually own to the center line of the roadway. So, uh, so unless the developer retain the exclusive rights, most private ways, the prescriptive right, prescriptive, not prescriptive, uh, me, uh, by, based on um, land court uh, judge rulings, you own to the center of the roadway. And when we do a taking, we would have to actually do a take from each one of the residents. Any other questions? Sir. The question I is, if the developer is still building in the town, do you guys reach out to them as a gesture of goodwill to say, can you just finish these plans? Because I know leaving five or six grand behind from them is not, right? But if they're still building in the town, I would think that to keep a good relationship with the town, if it's something that's an as-built plan that I would say a lot of time and money from going through the whole George? Uh, if there's an outstanding bond, we'll go after it. If there's, if there's, if there's no bond, um, can we reach out to him? You could. You could. I think it's minor stuff, that's why I'm saying okay. it saves the town money for the whole process. Any other questions? Sir. Austin Sharp, Two Lake View Ave. Um, I just wanted to wonder if you guys could elaborate a little further on, on Category 3, which is uh, unknown reasons, um, particularly if it's truly an unknown reason and the town um, can't explain why it's, why it's private as opposed to public. Isn't there potential that perhaps it could be a simple clerical issue with the town in the 1950s and it was always meant to be private, uh, public way? If, if the town can't prove that it's one way or another and it's truly unknown, I guess the question is, before we are, uh, as a resident, um, asked to do these betterment um, costs and associated with the improvements, um, I guess the question is, to what extent is the town looking into the unknowns 
That's that's an easy one, Mr. Chairman. Um, we do research, and actually, the, it's 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 never a clerical error uh, because it has to be accepted by town meeting. So there has to be a vote at town meeting. Town clerk will actually go through the, all the town meeting records to see if town meeting actually voted acceptance of this. Uh, in addition to that, the taking document and the plan is recorded in the registry of deeds. Now there are some cases where a plan may have not de been developed, but that town meeting vote will always be there. So we look for those three things, and if none of those three things exist, it's private. So that, that's the research that has to be done in every single one of these. Questions? Any other questions on process? <laughs> well, thank you all for coming out. I'm sorry, any questions from the board before we proceed? Uh, I heard Spruce Road mentioned a couple times. It wasn't on your overall list, but it was on your list of notifications. Uh, what yeah. category is it in? I live on Spruce Road, but I bought the large lane. So oh, okay. So <laughs> it's large you're concerned about. Right. Okay. So thank you for coming out tonight. It was an informational meeting. We'll make sure that the information is disseminated. <laughs> Again, if you haven't signed up, please do so in the back. Leave your email address, certainly a phone number. And uh, we'll use that as a vehicle to reach out to you. Thank you again Thank you. for coming in. Why don't we take? And we'll stop populating our website. Nah. Thank you. We'll take five minutes. You just clear the room and uh, set up again here.
flow. So I took so a, I took the key to the all 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 across Boston. Yeah. 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 And as I got dropped off at enough right on time we're actually five minutes ahead yeah. so Kevin are you still there beautiful Yay. wake up Kevin we can hear you breathing but, but we, have, we have something at at, um, at nine we did, we did it, it. We, we did it before you came oh, in oh oh okay we did that already yeah I'll do a private session that's for okay you. I think I, I think I've heard it <laughs> a couple have. times yeah yeah <laughs> Bob you want to take us through the uh, town managers Fiscal sure. 16 budget. Um, <laughs> let me first pass out a small handout. Yet another, yet another handout. <laughs> yeah, this is easy. Kevin, I emailed you something. I'm handing oh, it to the is board. Oh, this is a this yeah, is a vote. Right now, <laughs> okay. This is a um, vote sheet. <laughs> kind of. The best I could do this year. <laughs> Between shovelfuls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll start. Um, you know, with a method of going through the budget and the board can either speed me up or slow me down. Is this one? What I'm going to do is... Do you need a copy of this? I, I can get her one. Yeah. There's not an extra. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, thanks. Shut the door. Okay. Okay. He answered my question. I thought the best way to do this was to go fairly quickly through department at department and just tell you what I reduced or in some yep. cases added. Okay. Now, I have to say, by doing this, it gives a lot more credibility to the requests than maybe they otherwise should have had, but I'm okay with that. But you need to understand that because somebody asked for three things and I'm cutting out one, remember the two they got. So that's okay. part of my d presentation will go a little light on what they're getting. A and I'll only hit the items that are sort of big ticket, 10,000 and above. <coughs> um, administrative services, we're going to reduce the hours of the operations specialist. I had looked for an increase. We'll now look for a decrease. We are not going to add a clerk as requested by the town clerk's office. Right now, uh, she is staffed with five different people, and they work out to 2.95 FTEs. Bob, your handout Bob, has nothing to do with what you're it's talking it's about. No, something else. Okay, that's, that's a summary. This is a handout that you guys got a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, it's a, it should also be behind me. Okay. Um, the town clerk prefers to have three people there all the time. I like the depth that five have when they're busy and when there's vacations and absences and mm -hmm. there's a lot of extra coverage. Um, certainly, I, we all knew the 400000 for pay in class was not yep. going to survive. 55000 um, can be looked start. at a couple of yeah. different ways. Um, the simplest way to look at it, and I'm not saying this is what we do, but it gives a 1% call that are all new and non-union employees other than myself. So that's one possible solution. That's why 55 instead of 50. Um, HR and I will work, once we get a final draft, a uh, final copy of the report, we'll work on the best implementation. But yeah. I have to say, a 1% call from everyone is probably my leading choice because there's mm. a lot of people that got left out that first time. You, you may have some strategic people to keep happy. We'll have to think but about that, too. Hopefully that first the, round uh, mm -hmm. did that, but one okay. never knows. Uh, the next one is town council. And this is a tough one to know. We're kind of still in new territory. Um, <laughs> Brave new I world. cut out 30000 and it's ironic to say to cut it down to 150000 when our budget used to be fifty to 75000 I really don't know what the run rate is of town council <coughs> at this point. We haven't hit steady state. We yet. haven't had anything no. approaching a steady state. And what I've effectively done is eliminate any possibility that TLT litigation goes past July 1st. And I don't know that, but if it mm -hmm. does, we'll have to fund it. And, um, you know, that zoning project, I'm not really sure what the schedule is, but the next estimate is now November of next, uh, next year. And we'll see where that leads. But 150 should certainly be the run rate of things other than big projects and big litigation. Second line 54 is schools, Labor Council? Uh, that's our Labor Council. We yeah. also have a separate Labor co labor Council uh, okay. for a variety of issues. I'm sort of embarrassed sometimes I don't even spend a thousand dollars. Can I just say this now? I don't want a dime spent on gender neutrality language <laughs> by town council. Okay. Not one dime. The only one that survived was uh, the town manager. Was it his or her? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Fine. <laughs> um, we uh, cannot afford to add a third technician who will have to do continue to do yeoman's work in some cases. 
Um, we're not going to do an upgrade of Microsoft Office if we get an opportunity because we can save up some money during the year. We may be able to afford that. <coughs> um, I, I do want to mention this small item just to mention it. As a couple of you know, I've taken you a tour, the historic tour of Town Hall. Um, we really need to think about doing a much better job preserving the town's history. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that physically as mm -hmm. much yeah. as other ways. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there was a request here by the town clerk, perfectly reasonable one, to do a binder project for $3,000. Mm. And I used the opportunity to cut it to make the speech. Um, we can find the 3000 if she really needed it, but this is a tiny amount of what we should be spending on historic. In terms of housing the artifacts, uh, is, it a f is it fair to suggest that as part of the library's strategic plan, they take a look at incorporating things like that? They will not. We asked that question during the early part of the library building project. And? Uh, the best concession we got is they agreed not to uh, remove all the historic artifacts they have there now. Oh. That they would not provide additional space. They were going to remove everything. So the Library Board of Trustees was not in favor of that? No. They were in favor of removing, you know, the history room that's there yeah. now downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, they literally spoke at a couple meetings of throwing that stuff out. Where? The local history that's room. A stun that's a that, that is stunning. It's a that stunning why, statement. Why would they say that? Well, they want a well, historical building. I don't know. <laughs> um, so the long and short of it was we certainly, I said, look, if you're going to throw anything out, please bring it to town hall. We'll find a, a place. library is the perfect place and it to seemed have like, the historical yeah, records. It's centrally located. You yeah. can Good open Some place hours. Some people, people can access made them. Made tremendous logical sense to me. They just wouldn't agree. It seems like a good thing to follow up with them on. Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't feel they had enough space. They needed it for pro library programming. But in the in the end, they did agree to keep um, a lot of stuff in a conference room. Something's wrong with my ears. So, you know, it didn't get thrown out to the best of my knowledge. It all got saved. A lot of it's at the temporary location now. What's a binder project, Bob? What, what was in um, She wanted to um, scan some uh, old stuff into electronic format that's currently in a binder format. So, <coughs> and she has other projects, too. But I think what is that really labor cost? Uh, I believe that's outsourced, so yeah, you'd send it out to someone to do the work. It's not something a Boy Scout could do. It's I don't think or, so. Or like get, get somebody who's a history student to come and you know, do that, the that's an interesting question. I, I, doing it, I she didn't know? show me, but I'm thinking the thing she talked about is extremely brittle and old. Mm -hmm. You have to be really careful with that. But what I would suggest is this is something we could talk about next week with the 2020 and, and other things forming some kind of a small <coughs> group with a cross-section in town to address this. And I mean small, like five people hmm. at the most. You know what's crazy? We have such a strong and vibrant historical commission and a West Side Historic District Commission. And yeah. it would strike me that it might be some training, but you probably could get some resources out of that. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, Virginia, as you might guess, was extremely helpful in going to a trustees meeting and reading them the riot out once I heard what they were up to. Mm, I oh, see. Yeah. I said, can you please go and tell them we'll find the space for it? And she communicated that to them quite effectively, I guess. Sure. Yeah, I, I still don't understand. Back on the technology line, Bob, that's yeah. one area where I would hope that the there, there might be some overlap with the schools where they've got a half an FTE yep. and we've got a need for a half an FTE, but collectively it ends up better. We've talked about that for almost five years, four or five years. Um, there are clearly things that each side does that the others do not do, but there's also clearly some overlap. Yeah. You know, our, our two network people, although they do other things, do networks. They talk to each other about networks. We try to have as much in common with them as possible. We try to share phone systems and other technology. Um, sometimes they're a little more decentralized where we, than we are, so that a building principal might go off in a different direction, or at least have historically they have and gone off and got their own phone system. So it, it takes, you know, it takes two to tango, I guess is the fairest way. We're certainly open, and I've had this discussion <coughs> with John. I think okay. he is too. Um, before we leave that, um, that binder project, mm -hmm. do you think that that's, I mean, if we owned the hardware, um, would that, do you think that that, I mean, yeah, that's and I'm a, not necessarily that's saying it's gonna be, less expensive, but the longer term solution would be to have the right hardware, <coughs> the appropriate software. Yeah. Um, the uses become 
Well, that gets you. A, that gets you a copy, but I think you're worried about where do you put the original now. Mm -hmm. We um, when we well, digitizing this, this is, is going huge. back six or seven That's years. We did a document storage planning project, um, and one of the estimates that our concurrent town clerk, then as a salesman, um, gave us was about a million dollars worth of scanning if we were to outsource every document, every historic document we had here and every working document in this building that we thought we'd want to have electronically and send it out. It would be about a million bucks, believe it or not, to do. No, um, we said, well, that's probably not the first way we'd spend the first million dollars, so let's find another way. So since then, we've had a um, tremendous amount of work done internally by staff. Um, there's two folks in community services that have been working over time uh, probably for a year and a half now, and that's all they do is they, they do scanning of documents. So our permit system, as a result, is in really good shape. So we've sort of taken that approach, and in conjunction with your question, John, we did go out and buy some pretty powerful scanners for that. Yeah, some high-speed stuff. They're not necessarily designed to deal with the brittle and fragile right. stuff. I don't mm -hmm. know that that specifically would be economic for us, but I can find <coughs> that. It's mostly cameras. You know, we have in the safe here, we have three levels of safes. We have some pretty amazing stuff. You saw some of the stuff that's not in the safe. Yes. Imagine yes. what's in the safe. I, it's uh, you know, Christopher Columbus I was signed something in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's. The, I, I was stunned at that. The, well, the material is material. the material is stunning, on its own merit, and then when we look at how it's being stored, it's, it's frightening. It's um, yeah. I mean, I, I, so many things could happen. Uh, that, yeah. given the the physical plant of where that stuff is stored, it's. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the midst of slowly but surely doing very quiet renovations in Town Hall. If you've walked around, you've seen them. We knew we didn't have 15 million to do the thing, so we do it little bits at a time. And um, right now we're in the midst of redoing downstairs where DPW administration has been in recreation with the idea of moving all the engineers in there and the recreation folks out. Mm -hmm. Since DPW administration and engineers should all talk more. Um, and I like that idea, but the facilities uh, department has, you know, been on the slow side in implementing that. Um, it's been uh, eight months now, and <coughs> they've just knocked off uh, for another six weeks, and then they'll come back. Part of that is using the space really close to where this stuff is stored, and that's the next phase, if you will, once we can do this current phase, is to look at that space. Um, that space could be perfectly good office space properly used, if you don't mind running into posts. <coughs> but that brings us to the point of where is the historic location, which yeah. is something I'd like to start thinking about and working on. Um, you know, we, Gene and I have kicked around a lot of ideas, some, some of them crazy ideas. Um, you know, buy a house, put a historic wing in it. Um, Jordan's was looking for, uh, you know, once they got rid of the uh, adventure thing they had before they found the ropes, I said, well, I can't imagine anyone will go to Jordan's to get an ice cream to look at historic documents, but what do you think? <laughs> that was no. <laughs> uh, but we thought about different places, you know, a school. To me, the most common sense and obvious answer was a public library. Yes. Isn't that what you do? Yeah. But that option was very clearly summar summarily that's dismissed. Just that's, that's hard to understand. That's perhaps be revisited. That's well, really hard to understand. Uh, you know, you know, know, we're, we're spending a, a <laughs> boatload of money on a yep. new facility that's enlarged and Perhaps that could be revisited. You know, maybe we can uh, bring the trustees in at some point and have a discussion. I'd certainly up for it. Mm -hmm. That would be too. I think well, that's I an think excellent idea. Involved in that should be with the public. I think it should yeah. be with the public, public as well. The, the right. The taxpayers who are paying for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd love to know what they think. Yeah. Um, where it should go and, and if it should be in the library. There were so many, many involved. people who were interested in preserving historic house. Perhaps there will be many, many people who are interested in preserving historic document. In the location it's the where town's people history. Can all see yeah. Well, the yeah, it's more than the documents. It's the just irony here is we're preserving a historic library building, <laughs> right? Without preserving, without preserving library, the library historic documents. I know. <laughs> and um, we've also talked about having more local history brought into the curriculum, probably elementary school. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it be nice to have a location and to have some ability for the <coughs> kids to visit it and see some things? Because kids love to see things. Now, the Parker Tavern. If we want to add on a modern wing, you know, we could do that. No obvious <coughs> that I can think of. I was in uh, 
the Vatican a few years ago, and, and they had this was when the Vatican opened up its library, and mm. I was looking at Galileo Galilei's signature. I was looking at Michelangelo's signature. It's his hand painted this. It's so, uh, it's mind blowing. These yeah. guys, they, it wasn't just in a book, they lived. This is their signature, right? This is their yeah. driver's license, right? It's, um, <laughs> it's interesting. When I, um, it's good they let bygones when I travel or vacation, yeah, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I always find the historic society yeah. um, because it's of great interest to me. And what I see over and over again are homes. Yeah. One of two things either it's in the library or a separate kind historical of historic society. home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has been purchased and some didn't seem that historic but they really did a nice job of yeah. uh, so uh, but overwhelmingly um, as I visit these it, it's the library really um, and it tends mm -hmm. to be you well, know, the public's there right you've got the can you've yeah. got the internet you've got the, the things to cross reference yeah. makes perfect it sense it would be a great candidate candidates night question for the library trustees well, they may be able to explain it to you far better than I have, but you know, through the director, their views were made quite clear um, that they didn't have space. I think we need to speak directly to the trustees, to the elected trustees. officials. Yeah, that's yes. a significant mm -hmm. filter you're talking about there. Okay. And I'd bring the public in too, because the yeah. the will of the public may they don't even know hold this. sway. No. no. Well, hey. Virginia was certainly surprised, and yeah. as I say, very helpful. Yeah. Good. Um, so that cuts. You know, half a million dollars, uh, we need to find a million, that cut half right there in that department. Uh, the next is, I like the name that Gene came up with, the Department of Public Services, so I'm going to call it from that from now on, even if no one else does. <laughs> um, first, I have to, if it wasn't obvious, um, Gene and Jesse and John Feuda did a great job. Yeah. They've talked for mm -hmm. a couple months about a lot of possibilities, mm -hmm. and um, they had a lot of really good ideas. I tried to outline some of those ideas with a three-year plan for you over the weekend. I, I won't go into a lot of detail tonight. Um, but the first change I made to their budget, when I looked at their budget and I looked at our funding, I expected to cut seventy-five to 100000 just as an overview. I said, you know, this just won't do. We can't afford all this. So the first thing I did was add more money to the conservation administrator's salary uh, to make him a full-time employee. Uh, Gene had requested an increase in the hours to 32 and a half, and I just said, let's just go to 37 and a half. And just as a small example of, of one of the reasons to do that, um, with John Feudo taking on a different set of responsibilities, uh, Chuck, who is a really good employee, by the way, um, is willing to take on the full responsibility of the Matera cabin away from John. Mm. So there's just little pieces that make sense. Yeah. And why wouldn't your conservation administrator do that? Yes. Your recreation guy could too. But so there's little pieces like that that I think will be really helpful. Um, the health administrator, I agreed to fund that full time. Um, we can cut a little bit of money out of the salary. Um, they had been starting that in the mid range. I started at a little bit lower. I did reduce the public health nurse by half uh, to 16 hours a week, which is more typical in our surrounding communities anyways. Um, this budget assumes that we will hire what is currently a, a part-time Melrose employee into the same hours and structure in Reading. I had a conversation with Melrose today, and that's that's an agreeable plan. Um, and I guess the, there's been ongoing discussions with the Board of Health. John has been part of some of those. Um, again, the Board of Health does not fully agree with everything I'm saying for now, but they understand that they can't have everything they want in the first year. They very much want a full-time public health nurse. I think a, a full-time health administrator is much more important. Uh, one of the takeaways I hope you got from uh, Gene's presentation is it's been like Grand Central Station in that uh, department for a few years. You know, there's trains coming and going. But you can't even have a staff meeting because yeah. there's not a people there all the time. Um, here we are, and, and I'm like you. I want to have better board committee com uh, commission communication. We don't even have good staff communication. If you don't have that, you're not going to get the volunteer board. So one of the first missions I have in this department is to put as many half-time people or part-time people into a full-time role. And I think that starts with the division heads. That's the core uh, of the department. So all but one of the division heads is made full-time in this budget, and that one is, is working out fine. Um, I also added back um, a person in the Melrose Agreement, if we can reach that agreement. Um, this person there providing excellent service to us that I'd like to keep that uh, if we can. In the elder human services, this is where I am a 
agreeing to keep a halftime division head. Um, she does a great job. You know, in the long run, I still think a full-time position would be better there, but you know, she's doing a good job for now. Um, one change I've made, and again, it looks like just a cut, but is combine a part-time social worker with a, a part-time nurse advocate to make a full-time nurse advocate. That demographics presentation that we saw a little while ago was pretty startling. Um, this is gonna be one of those community value decisions in the next couple of years, but <coughs> for now, you remember, for those of you that were around, uh, how loud town meeting was about the nurse advocate position as part-time, was not funded by the town manager's budget, town meeting funded it, and made it very clear that's a priority in our community. Uh, I think this is another position that having full-time is far better. Not so much for the same reasons as the others, but you just don't know when you're gonna need the services of this person. You can schedule things, but things happen. Mm -hmm. And to have this person always available during you know, the regular town hall hours, I think would be really helpful. Does this spill over into um, some of the Board of Health's requests? I think it does. I think it does, John. Um, you know, they have, I think it's the navigator position. Yes. I think it's really very similar to that, but we haven't had a full discussion of that. I, I think as that comes out in the light of day over the course of the next weeks, yeah. I know that they've, they're putting the fin finishing touches on their. I was just reading that as I was down there at the um, board. And they are, they, they get, they feel very strongly that that, that their nurse navigator is a really, and this, I think, this is gets think back to the. I think it really it's helps. A, it's to a terminology thing as opposed to a difference. Yeah, I think that now, so. now this is designed around elders, and, and, and the board of health is that's looking. That's one of for. the issues. Is I think we have to change that concept and this name from elder human services to something without elder. Maybe it's just human. You know, services. maybe it's just human. I services. think it is, and I think yeah. that you know when you think about um, our CASA, for example, and what right. they're doing. I mean, they. They clearly do, don't split this by by right. age groups. Exactly. I mean, they recognize pretty clearly that there are substance issues, for example, um, that right. that cross all lines, all ages, and I think that that's. I agree that human services is really what this is about. Um, yeah. We started by getting rid of the name senior center, even though I still call it that. It's the pleasant street. The pleasant street. What could be happy? <laughs> um, another change I made was to the veteran service officer. I agreed that it needed to be full time, but we did a quick study of uh, wages in the area, and we were just too low um, mm. with our mm. current grade and with our current projection of full time. So we bumped that up a few thousand dollars. Have you entertained um, applications yet? Not yet. We haven't published the job. And no. is Frank not interested in that on a full time? He's basis? not. He can't. He's a retiree, so right. he's retiring again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So yeah, we'll be very interested in that. I'd say the time frame of that is probably mid to late February that we'll advertise, cause just because we got other jobs we're advertising right now. Um, so only 30,000, if you will, was cut out of public services, far less than I had imagined. And you know that shows up in the budget. Is that a function of, because of the ads? I mean, were there really cuts? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, partly. So yes. you know. there might have been 50000 without those ads or 45000 We also uh, came into some revenues a couple weeks ago that we shared with the schools, which helped our budget quite a bit. Uh, it was going to be pretty difficult without that. Um, so, uh, you know, community services, I'm happy where the budget ended up, again, higher than I thought. But I think more importantly, we've got a map forward. Now, we can't afford the map, but it's good to have a plan. And then we'll do it, deal with it the best we can. In the finance department, there's really only one material thing I, I caught, and Sharon mentioned this in her presentation. Every three years, they need to do a uh, outside mm -hmm. outsourced reval. It doesn't make sense that that's part of an operating budget. Of I mean, you mm -hmm. ask for it at November town meeting every three yeah. years. It's it's really as simple yep. as that. So um, it's a capital ask. <coughs> Not really capital. That's a good but question. It you actually could be. You can't put that into a rotating fund of sorts where it's budgeted every three and then expended. Well, we, we've thought that, about things that like that with like we've elections. We've done that before with some other things, haven't we? I'd like to see that out well, of the budget. Well, it could be an accommodator. Right. Well, you'd, you'd fund it one third a year, but then you'd suck it up in the third year. And that way it's Yeah, but it, you know, I think it's like an escrow. <laughs> it strikes level. me that that's, a, that's that a function of what town meeting needs to embrace. It really is less 
yeah. about you you budgeting it and more about you know a cost of doing business um, yeah and the assessors have changed the way they looked at it and when they do it so you don't want to necessarily pin them down an exact plan because circumstances change um, we thought of doing similar with the elections. Some year, th there's always a local election, so you know what that cost is. But some year, there's th three planned elections, sometimes there's one. That's a difference of thirty or $50,000. Right. That really shouldn't be in the operating budget either, no. to me. You know, the first election should be, absolutely, but the others, no. Um, public safety, um, the one big cut I made is not to fund the second school resource officer. Mm -hmm. um, Dispatchers were a higher priority. That's yes. certainly something that's on the short list for the future, though. And, and we can't let that get too far away. Yeah, I agree. And, um, you know, should FinCom, in their wisdom during March, uh, see fitting to find some more money, that'd be the first place I'd put it if yep. we found that much. Uh, both in police and fire, I've cut some overtime. Some of it, each chief mentioned they had a training request. Um, I asked them if they would want to do it this year to fund it this year by just going to the next town meeting whichever month we're meeting <laughs> and um, they said no it was too soon it needed to be probably nine to twelve months from now so again this will be a mid-year ask if they're ready to do it you know we'll ask for whatever the yeah. funds are, are required it's a really good idea for them to do this I think it's it's rare you know to Kevin's points which I appreciated earlier it's rare that you see two agencies that cooperate as much as they do let alone do a joint training exercise that just wouldn't happen so it's a great idea I agreed to fund the uh, two dispatcher positions, as I think I mentioned to the board at the last meeting. It just seems very important. Yep. Just out of spite, I took $105 away, though, just to remind them who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> All that at once you're going to take away yeah. from them? Ooh. Yeah, I got the bum direction. Well, I, those dispatchers, $2 I, you know, a week. based on the meeting we had. Yeah. yeah. We're already advertising the positions. Yeah. I said, just hire them now. We'll work on it. Um, if we don't do that, we're not acting in the public good. Exactly, yeah. Fire department, nothing significant. I did cut the stipend to half of what I thought it should be just because we can't afford it. And again, cutting the joint uh, training exercise, and we have another cost that will go as needed. And just to mention this, because in the budget it really stands out, uh, the firefighters and the chief are not getting 10 or 15% raises. There's a sneaky little line item down here called holiday pay that from the oh last yeah, negotiations yeah, so was yeah. put into the wages. In, yeah. So all yeah, of a sudden there's a zero there and it's rolled into other numbers. That was explained you know, mm -hmm. pretty yeah. thoroughly. Now, uh, the uh, deputy chief is in here? He is. Okay. Uh, right here, 100,000, no idea. You Yet know. to be named, player to be named later, is that right? And we have to be careful what we call the position. You know, to me, fire executive officer are words you don't want to issue. <laughs> mm. But nonetheless, they like that. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Chief, there's all sorts of union issues when you start using other titles. There's some of them are union jobs. This one is a non-union job. You know, we had we had through labor negotiations uh, for the last year, and I have the scars to prove it. Well, it's um, not a I fire to executive officer. Yeah. Well, it, it it can't be called that because that would be a union because that position? would be a union position. Oh. But it can be called the fire executive officer. Okay. <laughs> What's in a little jumpy with that one? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> you see the it's not something you'd want to do very often. Uh, for the engineers, for DPW specifically, their budget, as you can see, is really well behaved. Um, but I didn't agree with adding a second co-op student at this point for another 16 grand. It's a nice thing to do. It's not an essential thing to do. Honestly, having one co-op student <coughs> is not an essential thing to do, but they've worked out pretty well. It's really something that's great for the town to be able to offer to the students, and we get value back. But again, it's kind of one of those things at the margin. Those are managed super well. You generally get more than your money's worth. Out. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's really anything. Oh, there's one other thing, the, the sidewalks. I knew that this was just kind of to yeah. fatten up the budget. Um, you know, 10,000 is their typical budget for sidewalks other than capital funding for specific projects. I just threw it in there just to remind everyone that, you know, 165,000 buys you one and a half sidewalks depending on where you're putting them. Um, but as I walked home, or as I drove home uh, last week after the first big blizzard down Woburn Street, and I saw a person walking in the middle of Woburn Street, even though the sidewalk was beautifully plowed, I rem <coughs> was reminded that sidewalks are not always the answer. 
Okay. As, as we I heard that bring up every time we talk about <laughs> it, it is stunning how so many walkers refuse yeah. to use the they sidewalks. They refuse to. And, and, Kids, I sort and of give understand you the dirtiest the look in the world when you have your car <laughs> I, on that it road. Is, it is kind of a, an, an amazing thing, actually. I, yeah. I don't understand it myself. I prefer to walk on the sidewalk. But um, The next issue in uh, DPW, um, EDC has a flower maintenance <laughs> policy that. for 10000 a year. I think that needs to be done privately. It's the right time yep. to do that. We've Amen. had two options. John and I have, have worked on one of them. We have a second one if that doesn't work yep. out. Um, it's just one of those things that ought to yep. be privately funded. Mm -hmm. Simply. I don't think there's anything else in DPW that jumps out. No. And then the library, uh, you know, it's really up to the trustees. I've asked them to balance to the two and three quarters percent that the whole town got for operating budget. So they have to cut 40000 out. Um, Sort of parenthetically, that new position they asked for, plus the, if you will, 15% materials tax, takes care of most of that, not all. The, the technologists? And, you know, yeah. they're, they've agreed to do a master plan for staffing, which I think is great for the new building. This is the right time. Yeah. Um, should that plan be ready for uh, next November town meeting? I, I don't know that it will. I'd certainly be open to whatever staffing they suggest ahead of moving back into the building. If it's well, that was the big driver of you know um, of that number, actually. Was, Absolutely. Uh, um, so they they had asked for funding a full time position mid year. Right. Generally, we don't like to do that because you're only paying for half, and then you have to find the other half. But yeah. conceptually, you know, it, it's possible to do it. Um, but this is another one of those things. Again, if the trustees have a plan and it all makes sense and we're going to hire someone next January, let's just get the funding in November to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. I just think for them to uh, ask for it, I don't know with asking, but for us to agree to fund it at this point before they've done a study just doesn't make sense to me. So do, do the master mm -hmm. plan. Um, and that's, that's really it in a nutshell. Now, what I handed out to you and what I emailed to Kevin it's just really simply, um, I took all the cuts that were 5,000 or more mm -hmm. and the three additions I made, yeah. and I gave you space to give me your opinions. Uh, yes means you strongly agree with it. Okay means you don't really care, and no means you don't agree. Mm -hmm. So if you'll fill those out at your leisure. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned in the, uh, the write-up to you, you know, we have a small amount of money left over, not very much. Assuming that you don't have any sources of revenue to find our exercise this year is a lot more straightforward. Mm -hmm. What's um, the small amount you have left? Oh, you're wrong. So you, you, you yeah. can think this Oh, beautiful. What happened? I, I, I filled out okay as okay too, but I don't really like it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, no, that, your, your interpretation is okay. I mean, okay kind of just means not strong yes and not strong no. It's like uh, sort of whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But to be fair, all of the cuts, reductions in that column are assumed yes. already. Yes, right now they're assumed. Yes. But is there some money that you could, some buffer you have 3, to add back in? 3000 Only $3,000. Okay, um, that's, that so that, that doesn't that. cover anything. <laughs> no, might, okay. I, might I find another five or ten somehow, I suppose. <laughs> um, but can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, on, sure. Uh, one of them, uh, the items on, the, on this list that you emailed me here, yeah. operations specialist. Yes. Sure. That's our retired town accountant living in Florida. Oh. Much smarter than any of us here, certainly. Gail. Uh, Gail. And uh, we pay her for two different tasks uh, over the last year. One is to handle all of our Munis software implementation and training. She's done a really good job of that. Um, we just did a Munis upgrade uh, last month, like two or three months earlier than usual. She used to do it as the town accountant but it was well above and beyond the call of a town accountant's mm -hmm. duty, and, and our new town accountant would have no desire, I don't think, nor aptitude for that. So we save about the same amount money we spend on her by not paying Munis to do that work. Uh, okay. The second part of her job for the current year um, is to assess all of our software systems and our training, or lack thereof, and come up with a plan along with our technology director. So she's been working on that a little less so for the first six months, but o over the last month she has. Um, I would like her position to continue into the next budget year, but if she and the techn technology director wrap things up by June, um, they'll make a suggestion to me, that, and if, if needed, then to town meeting on how to use that money differently. Mm -hmm. My assumption would be it's a technology person, one way or the other. Is that okay, Kevin? Yes. 
That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. So if the board could fill this out again at your leisure, um, mm -hmm. you know, cut things that you want to cut, uh, don't cut things you don't want to cut. Um, you know, your input is, is very valuable. I, I was surprised when all was said and done that it was sort of a balanced budget. Um, I didn't really expect that, but I figured there's no reason to mess around with it after <coughs> it finished. Um, I don't know if the board wants to discuss any of that three-year planning, but I thought that was helpful to say. It's oh, eye-opening. Eye um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of scary. Okay. Do you have a version you could throw up on the screen? I do. <clears throat> is probably the most telling table here. This is just staffing. So this doesn't directly talk about costs, but it does indirectly. Um, currently, we're staffed with 214 full-time employees on the municipal side. And after listening to some of our volunteer boards and committees and, and seeing some of the demographic studies, and after talking to the department heads, um, 250 employees would be very welcome. <laughs> and the difference between where we are and that number is huge. An 18% increase in the workforce simply isn't happening. And I, and I have to tell you what's disappointing about this is with 250 more you know, new uh, total employees, you're not going to see a whole lot of new services. Mm -hmm. That's just to keep going with what we have. And if you specifically look at that uh, public services department and you look at the demographics, you know, next year we'll have a full-time nurse advocate and a full-time case manager. And that's more than most communities have. If we're to serve the growing population, um, those two people will become five and then ten within the next several years, ten years, let's say. How? Well, if those, if those demographics are to be believed, and I, I don't know that they're 76%, I, you know, yeah. I, mean, I don't, they're, they're a big number, yeah. but I don't know exactly where that number is. That's the place yeah. that you're going to get overwhelmed in manpower needs. I got to believe, though, it's going to get moderated. It's People reach a phase in life, they're looking to be closer to the kids or maybe move well, out. Well, and, and we may need to moderate it just because we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, well, again, we do more, more than most. Presumably, something else happens if we have more seniors, maybe we have fewer stu right. students, students. And so now yep. we have a little bit less need in the schools. And, you yep. know, I mean. So you think that appetite will shrink? <laughs> no, I don't think the appetite will shrink, but I think that the number of students. Well, that is what the demographics that said. That absolutely is the trade-off. I mean, that's, you know, that was what was forecasted to us by the state agency that looked at our town. Um, yeah, and they said if you don't adapt more towards that demand, then you will have more families with more school kids. Well, one of the other things that, you know, came out of that study, which I think is very interesting, is how we develop the town and develop the space. Mm -hmm. Because they were very clear about... Um, <coughs> Aging population is looking for a certain thing. Right. They're, mm -hmm. you know, they're happy to either sell the house to the children or, you know, right. you know, move into, you know, move out of twenty five hundred square feet into fifteen hundred square mm -hmm. feet in a, in a walkable place. I mean, right. th those are all things that um, were very pointed. That, right. you know, this is this was a like a like a driving need. So mm -hmm. if you follow that bouncing ball um, it almost says if you don't do the development they're not going to have they're not going to be drawn right. that, that correct um, demographic too. And, and to John's point that's something that you know, my planning is sometimes 24 hours in advance but this is something you have to do 5 to 10 years right. in advance oh yeah this is at least a 10 year window you have to look at and, um, and frankly you know one of the things that will help fund the the growth of public services is the develop the kind of development they're talking about will add the revenue streams mm -hmm. right to do it so it's a very interesting if you if you stop and connect the dots on all of those pieces mm -hmm. you know one is going to help you solve the problem of the other so you kind of have to do them in concert but you do have to there's a look in some cases 20 years out I think we're really at a very interesting crossroads when it comes to that. The whole Reading 2020 is right on time. Yeah, and, 
you know, not like we have nothing else to do, but the master plan needs revisiting. It's gone almost 10 years. It should be done every 10 years. <coughs> Town Council hasn't been warned of this one yet, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little less legal. Um, but the thing I was really surprised about MAPC's work was that the 55 and over age bracket is very interested in living in the center of town now. Mm -hmm. We don't provide for that at all in Reading. Really? Put them on the outskirts. Yep. Well, because then they can walk to different things. They can walk the to the public well, transportation. The they public can transportation all the development. The if you day, think about the development so over the last ten years, <laughs> it's been They're gonna have it's to be been focused that anyway, though, right? to the fringes. Yeah. Yeah. And every you know every study that you look at says nope. Bring it know, in the center. They want to be here. And, yeah. you know, I'd always thought that development in the center was you know twenty five to thirty five year olds, mobile, get mm -hmm. into town for their mm -hmm. job. Yeah, Somerville, you know, Medford, right, <coughs> Charles. I guess that's myopic of me to think that way. Well, and let's not forget that we aren't Somerville. Right. We're right. Right. And, you know, I mean, we got to recognize who we are and why people live here um, and the things that make them want to keep living here. Right. Um, so it's a... Yeah, so it's a really, it's a community value and do you want to keep this age bracket in town? And if you do, let's reach out to them and ask them how. You know, we have MBPC's opinion, but... That's an interesting thought. Would is it beyond our means to do a no. focus group of sorts? Not at all. And, you know, I mean, there's some steps that have been taken forward in, um, you know, in zoning, you know, for yeah. example, tied to the accessory apartments and so forth. And I think I've heard, I've heard a lot of excitement about that, you know, and it, it just recently. I mean, that was something mm -hmm. that really was very, like, we heard a lot from, from public that said, you know, we want to be able to do this. Why is it so difficult, you know? Yeah. We Reading happen to have one in our house. Reading my son has now recommended that we move into that. So <laughs> it's, a huge, it's, a, it's a huge town for people to move away and to then move the back again. Room. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of need for it. Um, I didn't want to talk about tonight, but I'll also um, be presenting to the Finance Committee of Water and Sewer Budget that we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and, and revisited it last week. Um, there's, a, there's a 10 year capital plan or 12 year capital plan for sewer station rehab work. Mm -hmm. It's much more economical if you do two at a time instead of one every year. So the suggestion from the engineers, and I, I agreed with it, is to add an, a second one on this spring at annual town meeting, use reserves to pay fully for it, and then take it out of the capital plan next year when we would have been using more reserves to pay for it then. So we're effectively moving up the project for three or six months. And then you do it two a year every other year? Um, We'll probably do that, although we probably won't budget that because that'll be too confusing, but as a practical matter, that's what we'll do. Um, so you'll be using a fairly big hit on reserves in April, but there's like two million bucks, you'll be using half a million. Um, but I think we'll be able to bring in rates now, um, you know, close to zero combined for water and sewer, forgetting about the discount change. If we do that, it's, it's gonna be minus 10. So that'll be a nice sort of a welcome thing. And, you know, we really have, Pretty high amount of reserves in, in all our funds. I, none of us exactly know why, but it should be spent, but spent carefully. It's one of those things like using free cash in the budget. It's one time money. Mm -hmm. yeah, so using it on a sewer station rehab, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Okay, well, that's all I have on budgets. I look forward to getting your feedback. I'll also send to you the form electronically. Okay, great. Prefer to have it Thank that you. Way. If you don't want it back this way, I'll take it tonight if you have it. Or in the near future. Yeah. That's why I handed it out because I knew some would do. Pass it in. I'm still working. Um, let's see. Next on the agenda is our preview of the annual town meeting warrant. Seems like we've had a number of these meetings. I, uh, <laughs> I forget what meeting it's this is. Well, we have one of these like every, every month. Every single <laughs> meeting we've got. They don't want it to be du jour. Yeah. <laughs> this is not the February annual town meeting. This is the April annual town meeting. Oh, this is April? Yeah. <coughs> well, we close gonna, February. But you're going to be closing the warrant on February 24th. So. For April. Uh, by That's charter, April you have to do it by March 3rd, so there's a week <coughs> just in case we get a blizzard. Or no. Um, no suggestions. Yeah, well, I... I've given up. It's too late to jinx us. It's already happened. The first few articles are fairly standard. Um, mm -hmm. I've tried to arrange it, knowing some people's schedules, especially town council is one of them. 
we have a lot of financial issues up front to deal with kind of the current year and the mm -hmm. current circumstances. Um, and then uh, depending on how your meeting went tonight, and I'll, I'll check with George, we have um, you know, some work to do on roads. There's a, there's a few different things. One of them is this, which I think is largely paperwork. What is abandoned? These are paper streets? Um, I'll have to check with George to see what that is, but this goes back to the Oakland Road situation. Yes. Um, there's, there were a lot of roads, paper roads, that the town had. Okay, now I understand. They were supposed to be abandoned. Oh, and they weren't. I don't think they were fully. Um, the Complete Streets Program, Town Council is going to work on an article. I was going to mention it earlier, but thought I'd mention it now. Um, last week, we were voted to have the sixth best Complete Streets Program in the country. Holy moly. Hi, We're tied with two other Massachusetts communities that we all stole from each other. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty neat. That's very interesting. Yeah. Who are so the other communities? You know, being me, the first thing I looked at is, let me look at that first rated one. I looked at their website, and I sent to Gene and Jesse here. You could do better. <laughs> um, it was close uh, to New York State. Uh, where I about forget the, I forget uh, the Ogdenburg or something like that. Yeah. Oh, the way up at the St. Lawrence. Uh, you know, they get a I, volunteer that actually builds websites. <laughs> That's what's going on. <laughs> that could be. So I, I looked at them, and I couldn't tell that there was much different. I mean, who knows? They were a little more polished about it, I suppose. Well, it's going to be interesting, the, the whole complete, some of those proposals in the complete streets. Yeah. Um, hmm. Driving from one end of town to the other. Yeah. Great a job as everybody did, and the, and the DPW oh. guys did a great job. But you know what? There's not four lanes anymore. Right. Yeah. And that's not going to go away. Oh, Kevin Gone? Oh. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's not going to change. Three seconds away. <laughs> Sorry, I muted it again. Turn your radio down, caller. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so the whole idea of going to two lanes, you know. Mm. Well, that's it, that's only part side. of it. No, I, I'm just mm. saying. Yeah. I, I it, it it brought me in mind of it because oh, yeah. I was driving down that particular stretch, yeah. and we're not going to get less snow. No. Um, and, and you know. And we're not probably getting less traffic. I think I think that's going to wind up being a when function. When we voted group, this, you guys remember we yeah. we all kind of ruminated over these kinds of what kind of tailoring and adjustments can we make yeah. Yeah. live? Well, we were assured that that was a you know that that Those was were a recommendation. That's a community discussion. That's yes. a community discussion. But look at West Street as an example, especially because I live over there. Oh, the the construction mm -hmm. has almost eliminated traffic on that road. Our families yeah. play they hockey. go somewhere else. <laughs> yes, they Clarkson. do. So many Clarkson and the areas in Reading are cut through. Not residents. Yes, they're driving in front of my street. <laughs> well, South Street. There's too. a sign up saying don't do that. Yeah, South Street is. All that is the volume coming a down way through west here. <laughs> in the morning is so much less than yeah. it used to be. Right. It'll yeah. come back in two or three It'll years. It'll come back when people figure yeah. out that it's, it's but done. But you so. can divert people now. They go mm -hmm. other places. It'd be nice for them going to Woburn if the mayor isn't listening. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, again, also depending how tonight went. We may have some public so ways. This would be the class know. one and two, most likely? Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of public hearings. Okay. <coughs> there was a lot of interest in like kicking it off. Okay. And so there'll be a lot of. And, and if it doesn't hit for April, we'll do it in November. We'll have a special town meeting, you know, whatever we need to do. <laughs> I told George we, we want to do it the right way. We don't want to rush. You know. But on the other hand, if you can aggregate people together, and I hope this is what came out tonight. If there are improvements to be made, it's substantially cheaper if you do it as a group. Well, careful. George said this yeah, George was very just uh, the opposite. Mm, no. George was not clear on that topic. Okay. Um, it depends on what you're talking about, but if there's two ten house streets, it's cheaper for they them to go in together than to do and it separately. That separate. makes perfect sense. Yeah. We're outsourcing it because you're gonna get a lower, you know, linear cost. Volume. Yeah, right. and the problem is Volume if they is all jump right? in, then the town can't do it anymore and the town is the cheapest. So sure. he might have been thinking more of that. Um, you know, the town staffing can handle certain Great cover size projects. Okay. <laughs> um, animal control bylaw. I talked to town council today. We have an amendment to make. Uh, the AG two years ago did not like a portion of our bylaw, and so no. they disapproved two sentences. We just need to come back and fix it. it this one. With the appeal process. This one we have to keep in complete sync with the state by voting. Whatever. That's what we attempted to do. Oh, okay. But he didn't like the way we did part of that. And this is sort of kicked I around back and forth for the last year. Uh, and then there's typical, well, mostly typical annual things other than the rubbish contract extension. 
um, we probably want to ask for an extension to be able to go out to uh, 10 years. We have mm -hmm. a pretty good bid or offer. Does that include the recyclables? Yes. Uh, cell tower leases, we're working with town council. We also hope to bring this uh, to fruition. This will be a source of revenue. It's just too hard and too far away for me to give you much color. They're, they they pay a lot. Yeah. How many and companies total? Five. And this all is around the water tower work that has yeah. to be done. Is there more room up there? Um, yes, there is. Not a lot, but. It doesn't take much room to no, drive a lot of revenue. And mm -hmm. there's other locations, at least one and maybe two in town, that are not in the public way and <coughs> could also handle this. And there's nodes of coverage gaps for at least two of the carriers that are quite interested but I think we could pull in another hundred or two hundred thousand a year based Huge. on what we're doing now versus what we could do if we maximize this so every little bit helps um, there's a petitioned article uh, by Bill Brown and some others posting of the warrant uh, we'll, we'll deal with this what's the gist of it um, he wants to narrow the window for you to call a town meeting to between 14 and 28 days from when somebody asks for it. Oh, this is the citizen thing? Yeah. And I told him it wasn't practical to narrow the board into a two-week window. What if they didn't meet? Yeah. So. What if there's another meeting, you know, six weeks out that you could? Yeah, we, he, he and I discussed it quite at length because it came up in the Charter Committee work. And, you know, the Charter Committee didn't like it. And he said, well, there's other ways to do this. <coughs> yeah, there are. So, you know, we got the signatures and we'll certainly discuss it. But again, I, I think it's, um, and, his, and his reason to want to do it is, is kind of interesting. He doesn't want you to call a meeting too fast or not, or let it go for too long. If there's a bunch of people that have, let's think of the gun control uh, article from last January. You know, there's a petitioned article. They want to have a town meeting. Want to have it in a reasonably soon amount of time, or they wouldn't have bothered. But you can't be too soon because you have to notify yeah, town meeting notify members. And, and so Bill's thinking 14 to 28 days is the right window for that. And I just think it's too narrow. Really. That's, that's, that's shorter. Too that's narrow, and that's, very that's narrow. sort of over-engineering the process. Yeah, I think so. most people have a 30-day calendar. Yeah. <coughs> people who are busy, and a lot of the a lot of people who are you know town meeting members are active people, and they have. They have relatively full and schedules. If, and if you're committed, you need time to reschedule your commitments. Correct. And you need mm -hmm. runway. Right. Yeah. So this is the Goldilocks Amendment. He wants it to be not too hot, not yeah. too cold. And we had this discussion in the Charter Committee. So <laughs> nothing new. Uh, other one, I, I think I mentioned to this yeah. year two weeks ago, the cemetery garage, the Board of Cemetery Trustees has formally voted to ask for this. Um, Does the selectman get to do a report on that? Um, <laughs> uh, you can certainly vote on it. And I do whatever think you we want. should. Belongs to the new building committee. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. um, oh. As does the DPW garage. It's Can I digress now that yeah, you brought absolutely. that up? Uh, would we be premature in starting the process to appoint that committee? I was thinking about that, and um, no, I don't think you would. Be. It would be good to have it something in place to prior to this February town yeah. meeting because that question will February? come up. That's no, no, just we okay. start the process. Because um, that's the first question that's going to come up when the portable is you know, it's, it's not approved yet, so you can't technically appoint people. But we can. You can't start the process. You, you can, can advertise. Yeah. advertise and have people line up. Yeah. And Subject to approval by the AG. You know, we got our yeah. group. So, yeah. I think yeah, we should. I think you should. And I think your calendar would uh, would welcome that in, you know, middle, late February, March. Would that go through the VASC? No. No. No, because the appointment, it's a different appointment. It's a, it's a different. It's, it's not, not this board. It's, it's three people. It's like we don't vet the yeah. FinCon people. Well, I get it, but what process then does it go through? You'll have to hash that out. It's we didn't vet the RMLD person because that's a special appointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's worth having a, uh, a meeting. It's uh, you know, school chair, board mm -hmm. selectman chair, and moderator. I think the yeah. three of you should meet and talk about that. Yeah. And then both boards are. What can we do to urge the attorney general to move forward on this? Um, Not they're, much. they're on a first name basis with most of our staff at this point. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, honestly. At well, last that's not a surprise. <laughs> um, we've urged them about as often as we can. Well, the reason I ask that is, I mean, you know, yeah. let's, let's. I don't think there's a problem with it. Take a jump ahead for a second. I mean, if, uh, if the town meeting approves these um, modular buildings. What do you do? I mean, 
do you stop them? Do you stop it? Well, until they, they, they're not going to meet the threshold, but they ought to be asking this committee for their advice. Well, no, it's two point. But, no, it's, it's under 20. 20. But no, uh, right. Jeff Struvel, I had a little sidebar, and he said they really should be asking their opinion, even if it's not two million. No, they don't exist yet, though. Well, that's why we want them to yeah. exist. Yeah. Plus, because um, you don't want a scrutiny threshold. Out. I mean, if it is two million, you don't want it to. It's the almost rule. What is your yeah. feeling about the uh, library building? I have always assumed they would continue to exist as they are just until the project's done, but you can think about that too. You no. know, as it is now, I am in charge of the library building project, formally. It's as long as that's not going to change, I'm you know, happy. Well, it will with a, with a building committee, the way it's done is mm -hmm. I will never have that again. See, I, I think that that's so far downstream yeah, to it is. interject it's somebody new would <laughs> probably be that, counterproductive. That's been my assumption. I think you should leave that. I don't. I don't think we should. Do we campaign to have that anything other than what it is? As I say, the process is working well now. So. So no as long as we have a strong project manager presence in that, I'm okay with that's it. That's the key. Yeah. Well, and the commitment of money's there. That's been in yeah. front of the voters. The I mean, it's the manager so of the many, process. Yeah, yeah. You get. A, you need a PM that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Actually, it brings up a good point, Dan. You could imagine years forward that a building committee may have a different group of talents that yeah. doesn't have that kind of strong leadership. Um, you know, what's the vehicle to kind of reassert? Is there any group but, but the but the building committee that... Uh, it's tough because the way town meeting set it up, that building committee has got a lot of power. They do. Even citing. Yeah. Hmm. And it's, uh, what is it, five I people? Was core. that the intent? Like you said, yes. So that, that vetting process should not be in a hurry. It needs to be very careful. Yeah. Those are five important people. That should, that should we all agree that. that that didn't have to be a Reading resident? Uh, it seems like we did. Remember. Really? The language that's, is in there. Um, the way the charter is proposed and was approved, only elected positions have to be Reading residents. The rest do not. So that my Correct. assumption is this would not. That makes sense. That gives you a discretion. Well, in case you don't have a bit the right talent pool yeah. available yeah. to yeah. you in your volunteer you can reach that's very important. Um, let's see. There's a lot of annual things. The budget. The budget will either be the second or maybe the third night this year. It's hard to know. Uh, and that's it. There's not mm -hmm. not anything more. There's a couple other tail end pieces that have to wait till the signed by a lot of changes already heard. <laughs> Yeah, that's so there's going to be no zoning no discussion zoning at all. No, nope. I think that's a welcome break. Now, CPDC's <laughs> had a discussion and agreed that uh, November will be here soon enough. And yeah. Maybe we'll be ready for November. Maybe we won't. <laughs> no, no. But they're no resting on your laws. When I say ready, they intend to be fully done by, yeah. I think it's July 15th. Fully, okay. Good. Like, done. Good. Because it really does need to go through legal process. And the Zoning Advisory Committee is planning to meet one final time to look through the remaining mm -hmm. components provide like just the their feedback and it goes over to CPDC so uh, preamble either leave it alone or crib the one they liked <laughs> Lexington I, was I, it? I, personally I think we should just pick the le the Lexington one was short and sweet it was yeah. one sentence it was very much to the point I, I would yep mm. I think we ought to actually put it in this one but mm. well it's a chip of sale it yeah. sure oh. no, it hasn't sailed yet I regret saying this but um, after annual town meeting, we don't have any more town meetings scheduled for six months, so we don't want to miss anything. Oh, you will have uh, you will have sitting there. That, those 200 citizens uh, will be marching on you with that <laughs> petition. Is there nothing in there about uh, any of the Birch Meadow projects? Capital plan? No. Uh, well, if we need to authorize debt for something, it's not in here. And that's one of the things I worry about is the different projects we've talked about. Well, we, ha we have you talked about you can always call spe a one, one day special within an annual it, it's it been done like you know if, if you had portable you, you've got it out there we're going to ask town meeting for free cash you don't need an article yeah. for that there's always a budget article yeah. uh, but if if it's debt authorization that is different and that's i've almost thought of putting a generic placeholder in there but you have to specify what it's for right. well i mean there's been discussion about the birch meadow project um and i know that that committee is reconvening and I don't honestly know this direct committee. Yeah. We, we yeah, could call well, they have a, you know they have a they have a group that's okay. functioning on you know on the Birch Meadow project itself. You know, think of it though, the language has to be final by February twenty fourth. Yeah, but you, you, within two weeks you can call a special within the annual. So you've got up to the end of March to put it oh, together. Oh, I see what you mean. Within the annual. 
Yeah, that's been yeah, done. That's that was done a lot more in the past than it is yeah. now. Yeah. Exactly things like that. That is, that is pretty easy. People are already there. Uh, we did Over that there. last year for the mm. school. You know, we had a special so you could actually open a special prior to the... Well, you have it usually the second night or the third night yeah. of the town meeting because they're, they're there. Well, you've got to do it while they're there. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you resume the month. annual after that's done. Let's see. Uh, thank you, Bob. Yeah. Next on the agenda is approval of minutes, uh, okay. evening of December 9th. To did I miss it, or did we not get the minutes in my package? Oh, I don't know. Did you not we, get we minutes? We got minutes in the package. We did? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm flying blind. Move the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of December 9th, 2014 as amended. I have a second. A second. There. Marcy will second. Any comments? No comments? All those in okay. favor of the minutes as written, raise your hand. Move the board of oh, Sorry, we Kevin. Do that. We have to do that um, oh, yeah. by person, right? Kevin? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to state that I was not there. Okay. I say yes. Uh, John says yes. No, I said I, I was not present. So right, right. We, We're doing the we rest of the vote. <laughs> okay. We got it. I think we have to do it, though, by person. So okay. That would be better. Marcy? Yes. yes. John? Yes. Dan? Yes. John? Yes. Okay. So, 401. Move, move the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of January 13th, 2015 as amended. I'll second that. Any other amendments? Uh, all those in favor? Kevin? Yes. Marcy? Yes. John? Yes. Dan? Yes. John? Yes. 500. Zero, zero. Um, I think that's it. Any other comments before we shut down tonight? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I just, um, oh, belay that. Yes, I do have one comment. I, I just want to put on our radar screen that we've got an instructional motion hanging out there um, tied to the timber neck swamp. And um, I'm going to suggest that uh, I would like to work on that. I would further suggest that we consider mm -hmm. bringing, you know, at least one citizen from each side of that, you know, of that discussion. In fact, are there not some informal discussions there happening has, already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, you know, actually, um, there have been some actually very productive, you know, friendly, Good. you know, um, discussions like from both sides, um, just informally. So, um, do you have a formal kind of proposal or a, a plan? Um, I, it would be my suggestion that we have two members of the uh, Board of Selectmen. I would volunteer to be one of those unless, Mr. Chairman, you've got other ideas, and that's fine with me too. But I'm happy to take that on along with one of you. Um, and, um, you know. Uh, Not you. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. And Kevin, you know, since Kevin, was, we're pointing at the phone. Kevin, we're pointing at the phone. Good, okay, good. so so my you know my suggestion, I don't know that it's a formal proposal, is that um, we have two people from the board of selectmen, that we have you know two citizens. Um, Bob, can you? I don't know if you should be present at that. Um, present, but probably not as a member person. Correct. Same um, as the police chief. And I'm trying to remember the instructional motion from. from there, were, there were five points specifically. Yeah. Yeah, but there was one of the points was who was to be involved. Oh, I know what was the other people. I, I had in mind that um, either uh, Chief Cormier or, or um, Deputy Chief Sagala would be yeah. well, included need, as well. You'd need that, but would you also need town council at some point to, to vet what's going on? Yeah, um, I put some time on your agenda on the 24th of February for you to discuss this. Okay. Uh, you okay. Can certainly prepare, you know, by asking me whatever questions you want in advance. But other than closing the warrant that night, that's the only thing you have right yeah, now. Okay. I'm just thinking yeah. out loud because... And, and like you, probably, I've also gotten questions from different people that yes. were or were not involved. Mm -hmm. We've already had some volunteer applications filled out. They want to be part of an ad hoc committee if you form one. So. Is uh, two members of the public sufficiently large? Maybe you do two from each side. Quickly, uh, two or three. Do we have a specific timeline to report back to town meeting? It just said report back to town meeting. Now, uh, I think it, it said April. It said the next town meeting, and April. we took that to be April, not February. Yeah. We were it very doesn't specific mean you have to solve that, the problem about that. April. Mm -hmm. You just, have, just have to report back. Ideally, if you've solved it, that's great. Okay. So, John, I guess if you want to try to put pen to paper and put a straw man together for a proposal, we could talk.
talk about it on the 24th of mm. February. Okay. Formalize it then. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm saying it out loud. I just because yeah, I, 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 I want to keep the ball moving yeah. mm -hmm. down the road here. Um, so. We haven't lost sight of them. <coughs> Anything else before we uh, adjourn? Yeah, no, I'll do it. Dan? Move to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? We have to do That's right. Uh, Kevin, yeah. would you like to adjourn or keep talking? Marcy. Yes. John, yes. Dan? Yes. John? Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Kevin. Can I get you to give me a ride to my class? I'm behind school.